So hey students, welcome to Vedantu Neat English. This is Baswaraj sir, your biology master teacher. I hope everyone is safe and sound doing extremely well. Students, before we start, before we start the class, quickly tell me in the chat if my voice is audible to all of you and the presentation behind me is visible to each and every one of you. Good evening everyone, how is everyone doing? Good evening, good evening, good evening. How is everyone doing? Are we live? Are we live? One second student, let me check. Are we live? I'm not live. Are we live students? Are we live? No, we are not. Yes, we are live. Okay. Students, how is everyone doing? So while we wait for everyone to join, let me quickly ask you some questions. Let me quickly ask you some questions while we wait for everyone to join. The simple question, the first question is, which is the universal pigment? When I say universal pigment, this particular pigment is present on every single, every single plant. Which is that pigment? Hello? Hello, good evening, good evening, good evening. Which is that one pigment which is present in every single plant? The answer is very simple. That is chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A is a pigment which is present in every single plant. Yes. Now, second question, students. The second question is, what is the ploidy? What is the ploidy of endosperm? When I say endosperm, I'm talking about gymnosperm endosperm. A endosperm belongs to gymnosperm. Right? What is the ploidy? Can anyone tell me in the chat? What is the ploidy of a endosperm belonging to a gymnosperm? The answer is gonna be is gonna be N. It is haploid in nature. It is gonna be N. Compared to angiosperm, it's gonna be 3N. Clear? Clear. The last question for today, but we, before we start the class, that is going to be, um, let's see. You know, blue, all of you know blue green algae. All of you know blue green algae. Yes. Now, students, quickly tell me in the chat. Blue green algae has chlorophyll A. Yes. Now, does the blue green algae belong to plant kingdom? Does it belong to plant kingdom? The answer is no. It does not belong to plant kingdom. The blue green algae, also called as your you bacteria belong to kingdom Monera. It belongs to kingdom Monera, also called a cyanobacteria. It belongs to kingdom Monera under you bacteria. Now, why did I tell you all of these important facts? Just for knowledge sake, because these are the questions which you'll be answering in today's class. Yes. So with that being said, can we start today's class students? Yes. Can we start today's class? I want to see some high energy in the class because today's session is going to be very, very important. Now, Plant Kingdom is a chapter which requires all of you to understand a few concepts, a few examples and a few cycles. Yes. So, can we start the class? So, before we start the class, quickly mark your attendance, all of you. Quickly mark your attendance by liking the video and we will start the Plant Kingdom chapter. Now, quickly subscribe to the channel right now. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and also hit the like button and the notification. Now, students, if you do not know anything if you, if you do not know even a single word for plant kingdom, I will be teaching you today. All the way from the basics to the highest level. So I have notes prepared today for all of you there. I have made notes for all of you today. So what I want all of you to do is keep a small notepad next to you. Yes, keep a small notepad next to you and scribble some information. All of you, scribble the information which I am writing and then Download these notes today itself because you have less time. You cannot spend a lot of time in preparing the notes. So scribble some notes, download the notes and keep a water bottle next to you and NCRT next to you and we will go with the flow. And we will go with the flow. The first question which you need to answer. The first question you need to answer is going to be your what are plants? Yes, what are plants first of all? Can anyone tell me if you are walking on the road and if an alien comes Yes, if an alien is coming and the alien is asking you, Sir, what are, what are these plants? I have never seen these plants. What will you tell the alien? What do you think plants are? Students, first thing which you need to know, plants are nothing but, they are eukaryotic in nature. Yes, they are eukaryotic in nature. Now, what is the meaning of eukaryotic in nature? That is, they have something called as true nucleus and the membrane bound organelles yes now can i call plants unicellular unicellular as or multicellular organisms yes 
दे कैन बी यूनिसेलुलर और दे कैन बी मल्टी सेलुलर ना यू टेल मी सर वॉट आर दिस यूनिसेलर ऑर्गेनिजम आर दे आर देर एनी प्लांट्स विच आर यूनिसेलुलर द आंसर इज यस द एग्जाम्पल फॉर यूनिसेलर प्लांट्स आर नैन अदर देन क्लमाइडोमोनस एज वेल एज क्लोरेला क्लमाइडोमोनस एज वेल एज क्लोरेला the next multicellular all of you know the last point which i want all of you to highlight every single plant out there is said to be autotrophic in nature yes all the plants are said to be autotrophic in nature or some plants can be heterotrophs some plants are heterotrophic mode of nutrition also example cascuta it could be or it could be a pitcher plant and everything but most of the plants are said to be autotrophic in nature that is plants are photosynthetic yes plants are photosynthetic that is they have a pigment called as chlorophyll they have a pigment called what chlorophyll with the help of chlorophyll they can do photosynthesis and produce the glucose correct till here all of you understood amazing now students now students this is your photosynthesis which i will not explain right now if you look at the five kingdom classification If you look at the five kingdom classification given by R H Whitaker, if you look at the five kingdom classification given by R H Whitaker, we know we have five kingdom. That is kingdom Monera, kingdom Protista, kingdom Fungi, kingdom Plantae, as well as kingdom Animalia. Kingdom Animalia. Clear? Now quickly tell me in the chat, all of you. Under kingdom Plantae, does the fungus is in the under kingdom Plantae? students initially it was kingdom plantae but right now the fungus has been removed and it has a separate kingdom called as kingdom fungi but right now kingdom plantae mainly involves plants mainly involves plants now students trust me watch today's video till the very end till the very end and you will understand this chapter like never before you will understand every single concept so promise me you will stay till the end because that's how important this chapter is and that's how i'll be teaching you today every single line will be understanding okay Now, sir, students, let's go. Let's take a small story now. Let's take a small walk in a park of a story, which is the older system of classification. Now, this type of classification was given by your ancestors. That is, we had three type of plants initially. That is, we had plants which are edible in nature. That is, some plants which can be eaten, such as vegetables or fruits. There were some poisonous and some were. medicinal in nature that is the oldest classification that is the oldest classification but what about have you seen this type of classification classification based on height and girth all of you in your class 6th and 7th all of you when you were in class 6th and 7th did you have herbs shrubs and trees all of you said this right now this type of classification this type of classification I'll ask you a question now. Is it artificial or is it natural? Tell me. Is it artificial or is it natural? Quickly tell me in the chat. Is this artificial system of classification or is it natural? The answer here is it is artificial again. Now, what is artificial? I'll tell you in the next few minutes. So wait for that. What is artificial system of classification? Artificial system of classification on the basis of only one or few specially chosen. morphological features that is once you take a look at the plant you look you'll take a look at the plant and you can tell okay this is a herb this is a shrub how you're taking a look at it you're not even seeing the internal structure right now this is going to be like uh, all of you when you see a girl you might like the girl from outside how she looks beautiful you'll be like okay fine i like this girl that is artificial what is true love What is the true love? What you you speak right? You see in the movies everywhere. What is this true love? True love is from inside. That is natural in nature. So true love here. True love here is natural system of classification. True love is what? True love is like natural system of classification. You look at the inside of a person. Yes. You look at how the person is from the inside. That is what is happening here. classification system that classifies organisms on the basis not just external morphology not just external morphology you look inside the person that is also the internal features also the internal features that is your natural system of classification that is what natural system of classification 
Will you ever forget now? Will you ever forget? What is artificial system? Tell me. Tell me. Artificial is how a person looks from outside. External morphology. Now, what is natural system of classification? Natural system of classification is how a person looks from the inside. That is, internal features are added here. Now, what are these internal features? Internal features mainly includes your ultra structure. How does a cell? How does the cell looks from the inside? Ultra structure. Then we have anatomy. That is, when you take a cross section, when you take a cross section, do you notice parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma? Anatomy. Then you look at embryology. That is one more point here. That is development of embryos. Development of embryos. And finally, we have the phytochemistry. Now, what is this phytochemistry? Phytochemistry mainly involves your chemical constituents, just like your primary as well as secondary metabolites. Primary as well as secondary metabolites. Students, artificial system classification is from the outside. Artificial system was given by your Carlinius considers only group superficial morphological characters. So, artificial will only include external morphological features like your habit, color, number and shape of leaves. But what is the true beauty? True beauty is your natural system of classification that was given by Bentham and Hooker. Bentham and Hooker which includes, considers internal features. What are internal features? Tell with me, repeat after me students. Repeat after me all of you. Ultra structure, first one. Second one is your anatomy. Third one is your embryology. And the fourth one is your phytochemistry. Students, today you will learn the entire chapter on your fingertips. I will make sure of that. Okay, so smash the like button right now. Smash the like button right now. And we will go with the next concept. Hopefully, all of you know the difference between artificial as well as natural system of classification. All of you know now. Never forget. Okay. The next concept. The next concept we're dealing with today is your phylogenetic. Imagine the girl likes you back now. You are ready to get married now. Yes, you're ready to get married. Will the families look into the family background? Tell me, you will look into the family background, not you. Your parents will look into their family background. Yes, that is what we are doing now. In your phylogenetic relationship, in your phylogenetic system of classification, we are basing the system. It is based on evolutionary relationships. That is, how is it evolved? You're looking at the family background here. You're looking at the family background based on the evolutionary relationships between the organisms. So in your phylogenetic, in your phylogenetic relationships, phylogenetic, uh, phylogenetic system of classification, we look at the evolutionary behavior. Okay. Source of the evolutionary relationships. Now, what are the source now? So in your marriage case, they will look, they will ask the surroundings, they will look on the Facebook or Instagram, everything will do. But here, what are we doing here? Here we're looking at certain uh, evidences. The first evidence is going to be the fossil, right? Obviously, when you want to look at the past, you look at of any organism, you will look at the fossil. That is the number one. That is the most common one is going to be your fossil record. Yes, sir. fossil record is there. Now, what if there is no fossil record at all? Imagine there is no fossil record. How will you tell now? Tell me. How will you tell the evolution relations of this organism? Is there a way to tell? The answer is yes. That is, first one is going to be your numerical taxonomy. The first one is going to be numerical taxonomy. What is this numerical taxonomy, sir? Tell me about it in one line. Students, numerical taxonomy is a taxonomy in which we take certain observable characters. We take certain characters and we assign certain number and code to that character and we run it down a computer and we use the codes to run on a computer. And students, someday when you have all of your time, when you clear all, when have all of you and every single student of mine clears, clears a need, that time I will tell you, my, I'll, I'll share you my notes on numerical taxonomy, but right now, it is not important for need. I will not ask you numerical taxonomy or numericals on it. Right now, just focus on the main points. Okay, I'll show, I will share you my notes on numerical taxonomy that time if you want to learn. The second one is going to be your cytotaxonomy. Now, what is this cytotaxonomy? Cytotaxonomy is very simple. You look at the chromosomes. 
what do you do you look at the chromosomes you look at the structure of chromosome you look at the structure of chromosome you look at the number of chromosome you look at the behavior of chromosome repeat after me students it is based on chromosome number chromosome structure and chromosome behavior remember will you remember that will you remember that amazing the last one is your chemo taxonomy chemo taxonomy again deals with the chemicals it again deals with the chemicals students remember phylogenetic relationship as phylogenetic system of classification is based on the evolutionary relationships and what is the source of this evolution fossil record if the fossil record is absent then we have your numerical taxonomy cyto taxonomy and chemo taxonomy as well as chemo taxonomy clear so with that being said can we start the chapter now proper chapter till here we just did the first two pages of ncrt done first two pages of ncrt is done now we'll start the actual chapter that is plant kingdom that is plant kingdom starting off with your thallophyta also called as your algae also called as your algae ready everyone is every student of mine ready smash the like button right now smash the like button right now and we will start with the algae now we'll start with the algae ready is everyone ready tell me if you're ready i want to know if all of you are ready ready okay students tell me in the chat is the algae eukaryotic or prokaryotic tell me in the chat quickly algae is said to be eukaryotic in nature that is they have a defined nucleus they have a defined nucleus the next thing is are they unicellular multicellular sir algae can be unicellular or it can be multicellular unicellular as well as, well as multicellular in nature now what is this unicellular unicellular is going to be your uh, you're going to be your chlamydomonas as well as it's going to be your chlorella multicellular are going to be your green algae brown algae pheophyce rhodophyce all the algae examples eulothrix pyrogyra everything okay next thing do they have cell wall do they have cell wall the answer is yes students the cell wall is present students write down these points because rest of the points i'll be giving you it as a pdf download download those pdf and download answer uh, and remember the answers okay the next thing which you need to know is the algae plant body is said to be thalloid in nature the algae plant body is said to be thalloid in nature now what is this thalloid the meaning of thalloid is very simple that is the algae plant body does not it does not have true root does not have what does not have true root stem and leaves it does not have true root stem and leaf it is not there it is that's why it's called as thalloid in nature that's why it's called as thalloid in nature now tell me in the chat does algae do photosynthesis does it do photosynthesis the answer is yes sir they do photosynthesis and that's why algae is called as auto the algae has autotrophic mode of nutrition algae has what autotrophic mode of nutrition the next thing i want all of you to understand is habitat next thing i want all of you to understand is habitat where do you find algae do you find it in the mountains the answer is yes sometimes you find it in mountains but which is the main area where you find algae the main area the most predominant growth of algae can be seen in the case of your aquatic habitat where do you see students aquatic habitat it includes both aquatic habitat includes both fresh water fresh water as well as as well as marine condition as well as marine conditions both clear now apart from this where do you find algae students algae can be found in numerous of places many places it could be all the way from your uh, you know moist rocks it can be found in your tree trunks it can be found on your uh, relationship with your fungi algae plus fungi that is called as your lichen so you can find algae even in, in your symbiotic relationships you can find algae on a animal also that is 
example is a sloth bear on the body of the sloth you find algae growing on top of it so algae can be found in numerous of places numerous places okay algae can be found everywhere soil moist rock wood everywhere okay sloth bear now students whatever points i have written are direct from your ncert you can trust this points i am not taking any extra points from anywhere what <coughs> whatever points i am speaking are also ncert lines only okay only ncert lines now students size and the shape of the algae what is the size and shape of the algae students algae can be all the way from your unicellular example is your chlamydomonas the algae can be filamentous algae can be filamentous example is your eulothrix as well as spirogyra eulothrix as well as spirogyra algae can be like a leaf like structure this is not given in your ncrt example i'll tell you no need to remember example is alva it looks like a paper not in ncrt don't remember that or it can be form of colony or it can be form of colony the example is your volvox example is your volvox which can be found as a colony like a colony apartment you know apartment like a colony this is a neat pyq this is a neat pyq that is volvox a colonial algae is a pyq the next thing is nutrition i have told you already algae does photosynthetic mode of nutrition that is there are autotrophs in nature that is important next one is reproduction students the next one is reproduction in algae and this is where this is where the questions have come and it will come in this chapter because this is where students go wrong what do you mean sir how do they go wrong they go wrong with the help of example because i'll tell you what to remember here first mode of reproduction is your vegetative mode of reproduction first mode is your vegetative mode of reproduction in a vegetative mode of reproduction the example is fragmentation the algae example is spirogyra here fragmentation spirogyra done all of you second one repeat after me everyone students i want everyone to sit and understand this chapter today don't write a lot listen to my words speak after me repeat after me or type it in the chat the answers just stay with me all of you today the second one is your asexual reproduction students the asexual reproduction in the case of algae is mainly due to the spore formation what is it students it is going to be your spore formation example example is your chlamydomonas the example is your chlamydomonas repeat after me the example for your asexual reproduction is chlamydomonas what type of spores is it form it forms a spore called as zoospores it forms spores called as zoospores now are these zoo spores motile in nature yes zoo spores are said to be motile in nature they are what they are motile in nature quickly tell me in the chat what do you call a spore which is non motile the answer question is very simple i'll tell you the answer before i finish this i want to see the chat the non motile spores the third one is going to be your sexual the sexual mode of reproduction is again divided into three types that is your isogamy a nisogamy and oogamy one by one i'll tell you one by one i want all of you everyone to remember the examples clear in sexual reproduction we have what fusion of gametes that is gametes can be motile or non motile gametes can be motile or non motile now here sexual reproduction sexual reproduction in the case of your algae is divided into three types sexual reproduction divided into three types that is isogamy and nisogamy as well as oogamy now what is this isogamy iso means same when the two gametes are same to same they are called as isogamy see fusion of gametes which are similar now now these gametes can be motile they can start running or they are non motile example is important remember the example that is gametes can be motile that is a gametes has flagella if a gamete has flagella the example is eulothrix remember students eulothrix is the example for your isogamy which is motile in nature 
which is motile in nature. These, this is, see the students, this is where the questions will come. This is where the questions will actually come. Remember these points. Why do you think I have colored it? Why do you think I made color? Because I know you will forget it later. You will not remember which is the isogamy motile condition. Eulothrix. Isogamy non-motile is spirogyra. Isogamy non-motile is going to be spirogyra. Will you remember that? Yes. Now someone is asking me in the chat, what is a planospores? A planospores are the spores which are non-motile in nature. These are the spores which is produced by a certain, certain type of your fungus. Certain type of fungus and these spores are non-motile in nature. They are non-motile in nature. Last one is your oogamy. Oh, sorry. I forgot, I forgot anisogamy. The second one is your anisogamy. N means different. N means different. If the two gametes which are fusing together, they, their shape and size is different, then it is called as N isogamy. The example is Eudorina. The example is Eudorina. Can you see? One gamete is big, one gamete is very tiny. Yes. When the two dissimilar gametes fuse, they are called as what? Eudorina. Remember, repeat after me, all of you. Repeat after me. Sir, the example for your N isogamy. The example for your N isogamy is going to be Eudorina. Repeat after me, all of you. Next is Ugami. Next is Ugami. Again, students, Ugami is very simple. Ugami is almost like an isogamy. That is, two dissimilar gametes. Two dissimilar gametes are meeting. But, but, in this, one gamete is very large and non motile. Just like human egg, human egg is large and non-motile. The other one is sperm. Sperm is motile and small. Similarly, here also, in the case of algae, in the case of algae, we have female gamete is large and non-motile, while male gamete is small and motile in nature. Small and motile in nature. Example is very important. Example is very important. The example for your O gamete is going to be Volvox and Fucus, Fucus, Volvox uh, as well as Fucus. So remember the example students, Isogamy, mot uh, motile condition, Eulothrix, non-motile condition, Spirogyra, clear? Then it is going to be, then it is going to be your anisogamy. The example for your anisogamy is going to be Eudorina. Then students, the example for your Ugamy is going to be your Volvox as well as Fucus. Will you remember these examples? Will you remember these examples, every one of you? Clear? Will you remember these examples? Volvox and Spirogyra. Volvox for your motile. Volvox for your motile. Clear? Now, let me write down few points for all of you. Let me write down few points for all of you. So, all of you take out a notebook right now. Take out a notebook, all of you. And I'll teach you some few basic points before we go to the classification of algae. Before we go to the classification of algae, let me let me make you write some notes. So write down those points. Okay? Ready? Let's understand cell wall of algae. Let's understand the cell wall of your algae. Clear? Now students, if this is your plasma membrane, imagine this is your plasma membrane yes sir that is the plasma membrane now out into this plasma membrane out into the plasma membrane what do you find out of the plasma membrane we find the cell wall we form the cell wall yes sir correct now students try to focus on the cell wall now let's focus on the cell wall Let's focus on the cell wall now, shall we? If this is the cell wall right here, if this is the cell wall right here, inside the cell wall, what do we have? The cell wall of your algae is mainly made up of cellulose. Yes, sir. Inside we have cellulose. Inside we have cellulose. Now, now students, the outer part, the outer part of your cell wall, the outer part of your cell wall has certain chemical depositions. 
if you see, if you see the cell wall right, out of the cell wall, we have certain chemical depositions. What do we have? Certain chemical deposits. Now, what are these chemical deposits, students? Now, these chemical deposits are known as called as your hydrocolloidal substances. They are called as what? Hydrocolloidal substances. They are called as what? Hydro colloids. They are called as what? Hydro colloids. Now, what are these hydrocolloids? Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very, very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. So, chloroplast, I will tell you, chloroplast shapes and everything, I will tell you. Listen to me very carefully. This is your hydrochloride substance, right? Algae is predominantly found where? Algae is predominantly found in your aquatic ecosystem. Yes. Mostly in marine, most of them are marine in nature. Correct, sir. Now, students, in the marine condition, do we see high tide and low tide? Do we see high tide and low tide? Yes, sir. We notice high tide and low tide conditions in your marine conditions. Whenever there is a low tide, do you think the algae, algae will be exposed to the sun? Yes. Is it good for the algae? No. So, in order for the algae to protect itself, in order for the algae to protect itself from the sunlight, what does algae do? Algae is very smart. Algae has something called as your hydrocolites. Algae has something called as hydrocolites. Now, these hydrocolites will actually do what? They will absorb the water. They will absorb the water and with the help of absorption of water, every single time there is a low tide and uh, every single time there is a low tide, the algae will be moisturized. The algae will be moisturized with the help of your hydrocolloidal substances. Understood everyone? Did everyone understand? The uh, function of your hydrocolloids is very simple. The function of your hydrocolloids is to absorb the water to make sure the algae is moisturized. Okay. Now, let me tell you a few things here. That is, what about your green algae? What do you find in your green algae? What do you find in your green algae? What do you find in your brown algae? And what do you find in your red algae? What do you find? What are the hydrocolloidals here? Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. In the case of your green algae, in the case of your green algae, it is cell, it is mainly made up of the cell wall is made up of cellulose. Now, apart from cellulose, what else do you find there? Apart from cellulose, we find let me write down here cellulose plus pectin. Cellulose plus pectin. Cellulose plus pectin or pectose. Cellulose plus pectin. That is in the case of your green algae, the hydrochloral substance is going to be your cellulose plus pectin. Now, what about your brown algae? What do you find in your brown algae? In brown algae, we find cellulose plus algin. That is, or alginic acid, also called as your alginic acid. Yes, algin. Now, what about your red algae? In red algae, cellulose plus something called as carrageen. What do you find? We find something called as carrageen. Now, apart from carrageen, we also have polysulfated esters. We also have what? Polysulfated esters. Right down here. Poly sulfated esters. Clear? We also have what? Polysulfated esters. Clear? Clear? If you look at your NCRT, it also says pectin. Let me. That is the end of it. That is your cell wall. That is your cell wall of your every single algae done and dusted. Now, let us look at the flagella. Let us look at the flagella. Now, quickly tell me in the chat, what is the main function of flagella? Why do your uh, algae require flagella? Obviously, sir, our flagella is involved in the movement. Yes, it provides, if this is your gamete, it will have a 
flagella like this and with the help of flagella it can be motile in nature yes it can be motile in nature now what about your green algae again what about your green algae does it have a flagella the answer is yes now which type of flagella for you to understand which type of flagella let me draw a small structure here let me draw a small structure here can you see this this looks like your chlamydomonas this looks like your chlamydomonas now can you tell me if you look at the, if you look at the diagram can you tell me what is the number of what is the number of your flagella here the number of flagella in your green algae can range from 2 to 8 the flagella can range from 2 to 8 but what about its length does it look equal in length the answer is yes so in the case of your green algae the flagella is said to be equal in length it is said to be what equal in length now what about the position of this uh, position of this particular flagella is it present near the side lateral no this part is called as your apex this part is called as apex or also be called as apical also be called as apical so students what is the flagella the type of flagella which you notice in the case of your green algae is going to be 2 to 8 in number it is going to be equal in length and it is going to be apical in position it is going to be what apical in position clear clear now what about your brown algae what about your brown algae in the case of your brown algae students in the case of your brown algae in the case of your brown algae if you notice the diagram it can be either like this or it can be like this true true and if you look at the flagella flagella is going to be like this or it can be like this or it can be like this now what does it tell you what is the number of flagella here what is the number of flagella here the number of flagella here is two flagella yes there are two flagellas here but does it look like equal no sir one is long one is short so can i call it unequal in nature yes sir it is unequal in nature now what about its position is it coming from the frontal part or is it coming from the lateral part the answer is look at here it is it does it come from lateral side yes sir it is lateral in position it is lateral in position clear so students if you look at the flagella if you look at the flagella in the case of your green algae it is apical in position it is 2 to 8 in number it is equal and it is apical in position while if you look at the flagella of your brown algae it is 2 in nature it is unequal and it is lateral it is lateral now one more thing which you have to mention here is the shape of this gamete can anyone tell me what is the shape of this gamete it is called as your pear shaped gamete it is called as what pear shaped gamete also called as your pyriform also called as what pyriform pyriform also called as what pyriform now i wrote about green algae and i wrote about brown algae now what about red algae what do you find in red algae can anyone tell me in the chat which type of flagella do you find in your red algae the answer is very simple that is in the case of your red algae the flagella is absent very important line remember in case of your red algae right here no flagella no flagella in red algae friends these are the see this is how you should write so when i'm making the notes right when i'm making my notes i write all the important points on the top of my book if there is some very important point i write on the top of my book do you see a space there on the top of the book and small space will be there right in that position in that place i will write more important points so all of you drill this in your head right now drill this in your head that in the case of your flagella is absent in the case of red algae okay it's absent in the case of your red algae now can we talk about pigments now can we talk about pigment now tell me in the chat pigment is a chemical yes it is a chemical which imparts color 
that is the secondary work what is the primary work of a pigment the primary work of a pigment is to excite electrons remember photosynthesis in higher plants i mentioned this in a photosynthesis of higher plants i mentioned this the main function of a pigment is to excite the electrons true sir now friends tell me in the chat which type of pigment do you mainly find here in the case of your algae in the case of your algae the main pigment is going to be your chlorophyll right the main pigment is going to be your chloro now can anyone tell me where is the chlorophyll stored chlorophyll is stored in the case of your plastids the example is your chloroplast let's write it as chloroplast it is stored in chloroplast chloroplast no mind it is stored in the chloroplast correct correct the spelling later on i have to go erase it now chloroplast now one by one i'll tell you pigment in each algae so write it down and remember now students these are the points which you need to remember if you want to understand this chapter if you really want to understand the algae write down this one point here okay now what are the chemical in the case of your green algae in the case of your let's write down here one second Let's write down here green algae brown algae and red algae now what do you find in green algae what do you find in brown algae and what do you find in your red algae very easy all of you write down with me in your red algae Hmm. now i have told you already the universal pigment universal pigment is going to be your chlorophyll a remember that point till your neat examination or before throughout your life remember the point that the chlorophyll a is the universal pigment that means every single plant from the plant kingdom will have chlorophyll a it will have what it will have chlorophyll a no so, so can i write chlorophyll a chlorophyll a chlorophyll a done now apart from chlorophyll a what do you find in in your green algae what does come after a after a we get b right after b what do we get c after c what do we get d and we get d that is in the case of your green algae we find chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b in the case of your brown algae we get chlorophyll a and chlorophyll c in the case of your red algae we get chlorophyll a and chlorophyll d now apart from these pigments is there any special pigments the answer is yes that is in the case of your brown algae we find something called as fucoxanthin what do you find fucoxanthin repeat after me the fucoxanthin is the pigment which imparts the brown color in your brown algae depending upon the concentration of your fucoxanthin the particular brown algae can be olive green or it can be dark brown or it can be dark brown okay fucoxanthin fucoxanthin now apart from fucoxanthin if you read the ncrt lines and not the table it also says that brown algae also has carotenoids it also has what it also has carotenoids now apart from that that you can write in a red algae in a red algae can anyone tell me which is the pigment which is imparting the red color that is your phycoerythrin it is phycoerythrin it is the phycoerythrin phycoerythrin imparts the red color in the case of your red algae clear students so in the case of your green algae it's going to be chlorophyll a chlorophyll b in the case of your brown algae it's going to be chlorophyll a chlorophyll c fucoxanthin and carotenoids and in the case of your red algae it's going to be chlorophyll a chlorophyll d and phycoerythrin phycoerythrin 
clear this is what you need to remember apart from this they will not ask you anything they will not ask you anything remember these points and these are from your from your ncrt the last one is storage the last one is your storage yes now what is storage here what how is storage storage is basically plants are producing plants are producing a lot of glucose it is stored in the form of sucrose yes now usually in the case of algae how is the glucose stored as the answer is very simple students let me write down again again remember first one is your green algae green algae then we have your brown algae brown algae and third one is going to be your red algae red algae now what kind of storage is present in your green algae the storage is present in your green algae is going to be your starch and oil droplets starch as well as oil droplets now what about in the case of your brown algae that is a pyq which has been asked repeatedly year after year that is going to be your laminarin and mannitol laminarin as well as mannitol laminarin as well as mannitol now what about your red algae red algae has something called as your floridian starch has something called as your floridian starch has something called as your floridian starch floridian floridian starch now what is so special about this floridian starch floridian starch is actually in if you look at the structure of floridian starch it resembles floridian starch actually resembles your amylopectin and glycogen so okay that point is very important they can ask you a question on that because it is an ncrt line it structurally structurally resembles your amylopectin amylopectin and your glycogen and glycogen important points write down extra on top of your book or make it a note of it somewhere else okay make a note of it somewhere else that is your end of your pigments as well as your storage done cell wall done flagella is also done the next thing is can we classify algae based on the storage or anything no the main classification the main classification is always always and always and always based on the pigment as i already told you as i already told you the main common pigment is going to be what chlorophyll a is going to be your universal pigment all of you know that chlorophyll pigment apart apart from that you can see your chlorophycea do we see chlorophyll b in your fuchosanthin we see the uh, fuchosanthin we notice fuchosanthin and chlorophyll c here we you notice chlorophyll d and phycoerythrin all of you know this basic thing now now students let me tell you one basic chart which will help you to remember every single example every single notes in one slide here it is if you look at this particular slide for your chlorophycea the green algae which is also called as green algae which is also called as your chlorophycea every point important point is mentioned here that is habitat is mostly fresh water and very few are marine very few are marine nature what about cell wall i told you cellulose as well as pectose and cellulose is present towards the inside pectose or pectin is present towards the outside or i told you pigments chlorophyll a chlorophyll b are the major food synthetic pigments food i told you already starch and we also have oil droplets starch and oil droplets and there was one more structure there is one more structure called as your pyrenoids one more structure called as pyrenoids now what are these pyrenoids pyrenoids are very simple there are sim they are nothing but your storage unit pyrenoids are nothing but your storage units and what do they store 
they store apart from your starch they also store proteins they also store what proteins so protein plus starch clear the next one is going to be a members the members which you need to remember that is going to be your chlamydomonas chlorella volvox spirogyra and chara apart from this you should also remember eulothrix eulothrix and eudorina and fucus as well as fucus clear you remember this no you just just remember just don't remember fucus just just remember eulothrix apart from this just remember eulothrix not anything else just remember eulothrix green algae right green algae right so just remember eulothrix okay then what about the reproduction i told you vegetated by fragmentation asexual by zoospore formation asexual reproduction reproduction in the case of they show isogamy they show anisogamy and they also show oogamy all three types of all three types of reproduction is seen in the case of your chlorophyceae chlorophyceae or green algae shows isogamy anisogamy as well as oogamy vegetative is fragmentation asexual is by again flagellated zoospores flagellated zoospores which you already know what is flagellated zoospores i told you the next if you look at your ncrd line if you look at your ncrd line it says that the chloroplast the chloroplast in the case of your green algae is variety you have so many different types of chloroplast so can you show me image here is the image if you look at it has it can be cup shaped chloroplast in the case of your chlamydomonas discoid c shaped ribbed it can be your reticulate it can be spiral or it can be stellate it can be stellate now students what is the use of this fancy very different looking uh, now what is the uh, human use to it students if you if they give you a collection of algae if they give you a collection of green algae the only way or the only way which you can easily distinguish the only way which you can easily distinguish the different types of green algae is by looking at the chloroplast structure <clears throat> because when i remember when i was doing experiments on algae we used to distinguish algae like this is your spirogyra this is your uh, chlamydomonas this is your different uh, eudorina this is pandorina yes this is your eulothrix uh, the only way to distinguish different types of algae is based on your chloroplast based on the chloroplast will you remember that yes sir you will remember that okay the next one is going to be your phyophyce or brown algae the next one is going to be your phyophyce or brown algae very important points again in phyophyce you should know that they are mostly found in your marine habitat mostly found in your marine habitat and very rarely very rarely you find in fresh water very rarely you find in your fresh water okay next one is your cell wall cell wall we can see cellulose and algin yes i told you already cellulose and alginic acid remember i told you remember we drew it everything we drew and wrote down then we have pigments i told you already chlorophyll a chlorophyll c carotenoids as well as fucoxanthin and i mentioned already before the based on the concentration of fucoxanthin i repeat based on the concentration of fucoxanthin the color of the brown algae can change from olive green to your dark brown remember that point very well then we have members again ectocarpus laminaria fucus sargassum and dictyota as well as dictyota clear examples are very important so i would advise all of you to make a separate sheet for examples separate sheet for examples or small tricks to remember these examples okay next one is reproduction reproduction is again same vegetative by fragmentation asexual by biphagospores sexual reproduction by isogamy anisogamy and oogamy so reproduction in the case of your brown algae as well as green algae is going to remain same to same it is going to remain same to same clear clear all of you all of you students this is how you should remember actually if you read your ncrt it can get little very confusing it can get confusing that's why making you read uh, making you uh, making you like you know understand point by point like this okay the next one is going to be your rhodophyce also called as your red algae red algae right rhodophyce or called as your red algae 
what about habitat habitat is going to be your marine condition great concentration found in your warm areas that is you can find your brown red algae in your river uh, in your ocean bed and also same red algae can be also found in your depths of ocean in the depths of your ocean right what about the cell wall cell wall is said to be cellulose plus carrageen plus polysulfonated esters and pectin remember those points not mentioned here so write down those extra points then our pigments we have chlorophyll a chlorophyll d and phycoerythrin phycoerythrin imparts the red color phycoerythrin imparts the red color then we have your floridian starch which is the food stored material yes food stored material is the floridian starch which has a structure similar to amylopectin as well as your amylopectin as well as glycogen similar structure then we have uh, then we have members that is polysiphonia gracilaria gelidium and porphyra gelidium and porphyra okay pp uh, pp gg gg pp you can remember now reproduction reproduction is a little different here that is fragmentation is there fragmentation is going to remain the there vegetative fragmentation remaining same asexual by non motile spores asexual by non motile spores different again why why is non motile remember i told you in the case of your in the case of your red algae there is no flagella there is no flagella remember i told you i made it down here see here somewhere in the top i made it right down right here no flagella in red algae no flagella in red algae can you see here asexual by non motile spores done then we have sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is only and only by oogamy here that is non motile gametes oogamy non motile gametes oogamy only and only gamy so asexual sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction in the case of your red algae is going to change a little it's going to change a little rest everything rest everything will remain the same that is for reproduction okay so with that being said your entire entire algae is over okay before i go to the last part of this algae that is your life cycle let me show you certain diagrams that is if you look at your diagram of your green algae they are given you volvox colonial algae volvox colonial algae they have also given you eulothrix they have also given you eulothrix then we have your brown algae in brown algae one thing which you need to know here is the structure of brown algae that's for the diagram that's why the diagram see if you look at the structure of your brown algae it is divided into let me draw here let me draw here if you look at the structure of brown algae it looks something like this now what is this brown algae let me explain look this but a little different this is your hold fast hold fast stipe and prond and your prond now what is this hold fast type and prond hold fast is like your hold fast is like your anchorage it's like root like structure stipe is going to be your stem like structure then we have frond frond is like a leaf like structure okay that is mainly seen in the case of your brown algae that is example here is your examples given for your brown algae is laminarin fucus and dictyota your red algae is going to be your porphyrin porphyra and poly siphonia as well as poly siphonia now can we start the life cycle now can we start the life cycle this is where the question will be asked and this is where i want everyone to focus extra now focus extra can we start can we start yes sir we can start so before we start the life cycle i want everyone to know two things what is a gametophyte what is a sporophyte okay what is a gametophyte what is a sporophyte okay now yes students frond is photosynthetic in nature helps in photosynthesis leaf like structure right now what is a gametophyte gametophyte there are two stages in a there are two different stages in your algae first stage which is the most dominant stage now when i say dominant stage i mean a stage which in which the algae will stay for a very long time your example here example is your gametophyte gametophyte is the stage in which 
the particular algae stays for a longest time it is also called as your predominant stage and it is always haploid so whenever an algae is a whenever an algae is in your gametist gametophytic stage it is always and always haploid in nature it is always haploid in nature that first point you should remember now remember students gametophyte will it produce gametes or will it produce spores obviously the name itself says gametophyte so gametophyte will produce gametes will produce gametes correct sir now what about sporophyte sporophyte will produce spores yes sporophyte will produce spore bearing and it is always diploid sporophyte is always going to remain sporophyte is always going to remain diploid in nature remember that it's going to be remain diploid now this particular point that is sporophyte as diploid gametophyte as haploid you will listen to this throughout the lecture every single time when i when i do a life cycle you should when i will uh, draw a life cycle you should tell me gametophyte is haploid sporophyte is diploid sporophyte is diploid in nature clear now students can we draw the life cycle can we draw the life cycle now all of you take out your book all of you take out your book now draw with me first one is your let's take it as a main plant body let's take a main plant body this is your main algae body imagine this is your main plant body this is your main plant body Now tell me, which is the main plant body in the case of your algae? Which is the most predominant stage? That is going to be your gametophyte. That one is going to be your gametophyte. That is one is going to be your gametophyte. Now tell me, this gametophyte is green color. Yes. Can it do photosynthesis? The answer should be yes. It can do photosynthesis. So can I call it independent stage? can i call it independent stage independent stage yes sir this is a independent stage this is a independent stage now tell me in the chat gametophyte is diploid or haploid in nature gametophyte is always haploid in nature it is always haploid in nature yes it is n it is said to be n now students write down with me right on with me this main plant body this main plant body will undergo will undergo mitosis will undergo mitosis now tell me gametophyte i told you already gametophyte will it produce gametes or will it produce spores obviously sir a gametophyte will produce gametes yes so we can see gametes gametes now tell me are these gametes haploid diploid now these gametes are going to be your haploid why sir haploid mitosis will the ploidy change no haploid in nature n single set of chromosomes now this particular gametes can they undergo fertilization yes they can go under fertilization when the gametes undergo fertilization this will result in the formation of zygote yes result in the formation of zygote done now this zygote will undergo mitosis again under will go mitosis again now before that quickly tell me in the chat what is the ploidy what is the ploidy of the zygote the zygote is said to be diploid in nature it is diploid in nature clear now when the zygote when the zygote undergoes mitosis which results in the formation of a structure called as your sporophyte result in the structure called as your sporophyte sporophyte then well, tell me in the chat is this sporophyte is the sporophyte haploid or diploid now See here, zygote is diploid. 
mitosis. Will there be change in ploidy? No, sir. There won't be any change in the ploidy. So this will remain as 2n. Remain as 2n. Now tell me in the chat, I told you gametophyte produces gamete. The spore of will produce what? Spore of will produce spores. Yes, spore of will produce spores, but undergoing meiosis. Undergoes meiosis to produce the spores. Now, if there is a meiosis happening, if there is a meiosis happening, will there be change in ploidy? Yes, sir. There will be a change in ploidy. Simple. Now, this particular spores, this particular spores will develop into the this spores will develop into the main plant body. The spores will develop into a main plant body. Now, students, this is where the twist is. This is where the twist is now. This part here, in the case of your algae, in the, this is a general stuff. This, this, this is a general cycle. But in the case of your algae, the zygote, the zygote will directly develop into spores. The zygote will directly develop into spores and all this part will not happen. All this will not happen. Okay. Now, if you ask me why, sir, what exactly happens then? If this part is not happening, how does the zygote produce the spores? How does the zygote, which is 2n in nature, how will it produce spores? Here we have a phenomena called as zygotic meiosis. Zygotic meiosis. Zygotic meiosis takes place. That is, meiosis occur. Meiosis occur at the time of zygote germination. At the, at the time of zygote germination, meiosis takes place, zygotic meiosis takes place, which results in the formation of spores. Zygotic meiosis. So, if, if, you, if they ask you a question, need examination. If they ask you a question, need examination, where does the meiosis takes place? Or where does the spore formation takes place? In the case of your algae, the answer should be within the spores during the germination of zygote. During the germination of zygote. Occur at the time of zygote germination. Let me write here. Occur at the time of germination. Occur at the time of zygote. germination. Occur at the time of zygote germination. Zygotic meiosis. Clear? That is your entire life cycle. Do you want me to move aside a little? I'll move aside. Take a screenshot or write, better write it down and learn this. And learn this main plant body, gametophytic in nature, independent living. Independent living. Which undergoes mitosis to produce the gametes. Gametophyte, gametes. Ploidy remains the same. Then we have fertilization. Gametes undergoing fertilization will result in the formation of your zygote, right? Zygote. Now, this zygote will go what? This zygote will undergo zygotic meiosis to produce the spores. And the spores will later, later undergo, undergo mitosis to produce your main plant body again. See, N, N is maintained. The ploidy is maintained. That's how, that's how you learn every single cycle. Clear? So throughout today's session, throughout today's session, we'll be doing a lot of cycles. We'll be doing a lot of cycles. We'll be, we'll be doing a cycle for your bryophytes, liverworts, mosses, and uh, pteridophytes, homospory, heterospory, and we'll be doing a cycle for your uh, gymnosperms. In total, five cycles. One cycle, done. Okay, one cycle is done. Did everyone understand? Did everyone understand? Now, what is the economic, economic importance of your algae? What is the economic importance of your algae? First one, write down. The mere 50% of CO2 fixation, 50% of CO2 fixation on earth is done by algae. It is done by algae. First important point. The second important point. The second important point is that all of you know food chain. Yes. All of you know primary producer. Yes. Primary producer the organisms which does photosynthesis and continues the chain. So algae is technically, algae is technically primary producer. It is technically primary producer in the case of your 
aquatic ecosystem in the case of your aquatic ecosystem second point okay the third point here is it is a major food source that is sargasm and laminaria and porphyra are used as a food chlorella which is a unicellular algae green algae green algae is used as a protein supplement even in the case of your space programs even in the case of your space programs the next one is your gracilaria and gelidium gracilaria and gelidium are used in your preparation of agar preparation of agar that is agar is mainly used in your agar is mainly used in your where biotechnology experiments that is in the case of your plant biotechnology in the case of your plant biotechnology and also microbiology and also microbiology then also preparation of jellies and ice creams then we have certain marine brown and red algae produce a large amount of hydrocolloids did we mention that yes sir we mentioned hydrocolloids that is algae from your brown algae caragene from your red algae caragene from your red algae clear are you understanding are you understanding every single point students i will give you these notes i will personally send these notes okay i want each and every one of you to read these notes understand these notes and read ncert after that and trust me if you read these notes one time read ncert one time solve pyqs one time you will never have to even remember this chapter again and only thing which you need to remember from this chapter is going to be examples that's it that's it that's how you should understand this chapter okay solve this question now solve this question all of you the first question here is which of the following undergoes meiosis in algae meiosis in algae zoospore zygote aplanospores algae never undergoes meiosis they are they are haploid in nature answer tell me hello omas kitchen hi to you tell me the answer quickly following undergoes meiosis in algae easy question i told you right that is going to be your zygote zygote undergoes algae called as your zygotic meiosis yes that is called as your zygotic meiosis an algae has an algae has a thallus body of only green color moss like body with simple shoot plant with distinctive shoot or none of the above or none of the above tell me in the chat obviously it's going to be none of the above because it doesn't have only green no is algae only green sweetie is the algae only green no we have red algae we have your brown algae wrong answer moss like body with simple shoot no we have shoot like structure there is no shoot here there is no shoot here wrong plant body with distinct shoot no there is no shoot here why is everyone going for a why is everyone going for a the answer is none of the above that is <laughs> coffee i will drink coffee that is not coffee it is tea why is everyone going for a oh blame it on keyboard now keyboard mistype huh? so many people cannot go mistype at one because you don't de don't read the question see when you don't read the question this is what happens okay the answer is none of the above because remember thallus body is not only green in color the thallus body can be brown red so much of effort going in vain <laughs> so much of effort going in vain oh god don't make this mistake again students read the question properly solve it properly don't make the same mistake again neat examination okay next question which of the following are colonial green algae very easy question take 5 seconds 5 4 3 Two, one. Times up. It's going to be your wall box. Easy. Huh. Next one is going to be in kelps. Oh ho! In kelps, the plant body is usually attached to the substratum by a. Now kelps are basically your brown algae. Kelps are your brown algae. Answer is going to be your hold fast. With the help of hold pa hold fast, the particular algae is stuck to the substratum. okay so with that being said we are done with that being said we are done with algae 
I know it took sort of so much of time because students trust me algae is the point where we get a lot of questions you might not get a lot of questions from your bryophytes, theropods, gymnosperms but you'll get a lot of questions from your algae and trust me whatever notes I'm making you write whatever notes I've given you on the slides these are enough these notes are enough for every question you can solve okay so can we start now can we start with the bryophytes now can we start with bryophytes so if you want me to start with bryophytes hit the like button right now and subscribe to the channel okay can we start bryophytes can we start bryophytes yes students students and love this chapter trust me this chapter will teach you so many new things because if you want to you know if i have to welcome exactly ncrt is enough ncrt is enough so this chapter is basically telling me telling you welcome to the plant kingdom you know welcome to the beautiful world of plant kingdom every single plant is so unique so, see imagine we have so many useless organisms okay some organism may without even thinking will do something okay so many useless organisms are there but trust me in the world of plants every single evolutionary point of plant is so calculated that's how beautiful plants are and trust me if you love the plant kingdom chapter no you will understand the importance of botany okay and someone asked me why do you want to teach because trust me students teaching is so much of fun and it is not lonely <laughs> the best part is when i have so students watching me and i'm interacting and if my knowledge which i have is like you know getting uh, pushed to all of you that is that is fun okay now let me ask all of you a question let me ask all of you a question okay i'm a botany teacher okay msc botany question is no algae had all the water in the world algae had all the water in the world sunlight in the world essential for photosynthesis yes it had all the sunlight all the water everything then why do you think why do you think plants evolved onto land plants could have stayed inside the water they got chilled in their water why did they come out of the comfort zone and they came onto the land can anyone tell me the answer to this question why did the plants had to you know okay fine today has a day has come today i will evolve myself today i'll become a better person i will study every single day why did the plant think like that the plant was thinking like that because why because of survival because of survival the plant had to survive the plant had to survive that is in your depths of ocean in your depths of ocean sometimes sunlight cannot reach there yes sometimes sunlight cannot reach there in that conditions do you think algae would have survived no sunlight is very important yes sunlight is very important the second one is going to be your algal blooms all of you know algal blooms all of you know algal blooms right so when an algal bloom happens what happens to the nutrients does the nutrient increase or does the nutrients decrease obviously sir every single time there's the algal bloom the nutrients the nutrients are going to decrease if the nutrients are decreasing yes if the nutrients are decreasing can the plants can the algae survive no so they move onto the land why because on the land on the land there are numerous numerous soil particles more soil more minerals more nutrients yes so those are the reasons for a plant that is algae to evolve into a bryophyte evolve into a bryophyte clear if someone asks you a question why did they land, land why did they travel to the land all of you should know that now quickly tell me in the chat have you seen this have you seen this in your roadside you know when you're walking on the road on the small small corners you might see small small like you know green green color grass growing there that is not grass that is not grass that is basically your bryophytes that is basically your bryophytes that is now we'll be studying about bryophytes now we'll be studying about bryophytes okay can we start yes sir now students if you look at your bryophytes habitat if you look at the bryophytes habitat most of the bryophytes are mainly mainly grown in your moist and shady places so you can find you can find your habitat for your bryophytes is going to be your moist shady areas yes and oh, i think i'm changing slide and do you know do you know your bryophytes are called as 
amphibians of plant kingdom they are called as what amphibians of plant kingdom now what is the reason can they survive on land and water both that is is that the answer no the answer to the question is why are they called as amphibians of plant kingdom is because bryophytes bryophytes can survive on the land but but if they want to do fertilization if they want to do sexual fertilization they need water for it they need water for it so <clears throat> let us they are called as amphibians of plant kingdom they live on soil but depend on water for sexual reproduction why for the transfer of gametes exactly for the transfer of gametes now listen to me very carefully they have thallus like and erect and attached to the substratum by unicellular or multicellular rhizoids that is even in the case of even in the case of bryophytes are they do they have true root and stem no so even in the case of bryophytes students even in the case of bryophytes they do not have a true root true stem and true leaf the only difference with your bryophyte is going to be the bryophytes thallus can be erect as well as prostate it can be prostate as well as erect important point they can have something called as unicellular as well as multicellular rhizoids now what are these rhizoids rhizoids are like root like structure they are what root like structure root like structure root like structure clear usually occur in damp humid and shady locations all of you know that they lack true root stem and leaves they lack xylem they lack phloem that is they are non vascular plants just like your algae just like your algae bryophytes also does not have any type of vascular system and i already mentioned you that the if you look at the plant body it th thallus can be prostate the thallus can be prostate yes or it can be erect it can be erect the prostate example is your marcantia marcantia is example for your marcantia is the example for your prostate now what about your erect can anyone in the chat tell me the example for your erect type anyone tell me the example for your erect in the chat direct example okay tell me the chat oh is it done here okay prostate and erect now that is done that is done now the next thing i want all of you to understand is the sex organs here sex organs listen to me very carefully students if you read the ncert line you will get confused here if you look at the ncert diagram you will get confused here the ncert diagram is not giving you sex organs it is not showing you sex organs actually okay the sex organ is here here's antheridium in the case of male sex organ that is and in the case of female sex organ it is archegonium remember in the case of male sex organ it is antheridium and in the case of your female sex organ it's going to be archegonium not antheridia 4 or archegonia 4 antheridia 4 and archegonia 4 are stock they are stock of the sex organs they are not the sex organs i still don't know why ncert has highlighted that they should have highlighted the sex organs okay so we have male sex organ is going to be antheridium female sex organ is going to be archegonium now what does the antheridium produce antheridium produces biflagellated biflagellated anthrozoites it produces what it produces biflagellated anthrozoites points to be noted these are the points which you need to be noted then we have in the case of archegonium in the case of archegonium it is a flask shaped structure with a single egg cell with a single egg cell can you see this flask shaped structure archegonium can you see flask shaped structure with a sing single egg cell with a single egg cell this is what is given in your ncert students repeat after me this is what is given in your ncert can you see rhizoids multicellular unicellular here it is unicellular which i'll tell you why then we have archegonia 4 what do we have here we have the 
archegoniophore and we have anthridiophore archegoniophore and anthridiophore archegoniophore and anthridiophore archegoniophore will have archegonium anthridiophore will have anthridium can you see this one this is anthridium this is your archegonium clear they are not showing you the sex organs in the diagram they are showing you the stock of the sex organs clear clear that point to be clear is that clear to each and every one of you because i want do not be confused in the concept here learn the concept okay now classification of bryophytes classification of bryophytes it's mainly based into three types in your ncrt only two types that is bryophytes can be divided into mosses bryophytes can be divided into mosses liverworts and hornworts as well as hornworts but in your ncrt in your ncrt you need to remember only and only only and only mosses and liverworts mosses and liverworts and i have made one one slide for each only one slide for each only two or three points you will understand liverworts you will understand mosses don't need to break your head over this okay the first thing is your and the other example for your mosses is given here the example for your mosses is given here example for your mosses is going to be your funeria here funeria as well as your sphagnum as well as your sphagnum sphagnum is called as your peat moss funeria simple example which i have tell you later on we'll later on we'll discuss the gametophyte and sporophyte okay but if you if you already know from the algae sporoph gametophyte is haploid in nature sporophyte is going to be your diploid in nature all of you know that and if you remember the last time we learned sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte can you see gametophyte is green color it can do photosynthesis but your sporophyte is non green color it cannot do photosynthesis it is your sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte sporophyte is dependent on gametophyte clear now students let's understand liverworts now let's understand liverworts let's understand liverworts students the example for liverworts the example for liverworts which is given in your ncrt is none other than marchensia which is what it is given as your marchensia and this is how marchensia looks like this is how marchensia looks like in real see can you see marchensia this is your leaf like structure this is a leaf like structure stem like structure stem like structure clear stem like structure as well as your leaf like structure okay now all of you listen to my points these are the mainly points these are the main points which you need to know for your liverworts apart from this forget everything okay the first point here is thallus is undifferentiated thalloid liverworts that is even in the case of even in the case of your liverworts the plant body is thalloid in nature now what is the meaning of thalloid in nature that is it does not have it does not have true root true stem and true leaves all are missing all are missing in nature now the thallus is dorsi ventrally and closely oppressed to the substrate thallus here the main thallus is dorsi ventrally oppressed to the surface what is the meaning of this this right here is your ncrt line students i'm not making this points from anywhere this is the ncrt lines actually these are your ncrt lines i have not typed it from somewhere i have copy pasted from your ncrt line only only look they look very different okay now what is the meaning here listen very carefully listen very carefully if this is the thallus if this is going to be your thallus it is dorsi ventral it is dorsi ventral and it is oppressed to the soil meaning is that if this is the soil this is the soil the thallus is very close to the soil the thallus is what the thallus here is very close to the soil that is the meaning of that line that is the meaning of that line clear this is your thallus this is your thallus main thallus of your liverwort main thallus of your liverwort main plant body basically thallus means the main plant body the main plant body is going to be very oppressed to the soil 
clear now students next line is the leafy members they are talking about now certain leafy members leafy members have a tiny leaf like appendages what do they have they have tiny leaf like appendages in two rows on stem like structure heavy words let me draw a diagram for you look at the diagram and understand look at the diagram and understand now we have a stem like structure here here for this one we have a stem like structure now students on the stem like structure on the stem like structure we have two rows of what do we have two rows of leaves it says right tiny leaf like appendages in two rows here this is how it looks this is how it looks on the two rows that is leaf like appendages in two rows on a stem like structure understand this is how this this is how this is how the main plant body looks like in the leafy members understand the help of diagram otherwise very difficult students if you just read the lines of ncrt little bit difficult to understand that is why i'm not doing decode for this i'm making you understand the lines of ncrt okay not decode here now here most important line of this most important line in the case of your liverworts most important line in the case of liverworts is going to be rhizoids are unicellular very important rhizoids are going to be unicellular here unicellular done all of you done rhizoids are going to be unicellular here now students next one is your mosses that's all you need to know for your liverworts nothing to break your head nothing to break your head just learn this one slide just learn this one slide and just learn the life cycle which i will teach you which i will draw you and make you understand today the life cycle you will understand the bryophytes completely nothing to worry okay now let's do mosses now in the case of your in the case of your bryoph in the case of your liverworts the only example liverwort example was your marchantia examples very important but in the case of but in the case of your mosses three examples three examples first one is your funaria second one is your sphagnum third one is your polytrichum now diagram go, go, gives you funaria and sphagnum the diagram is not showing you polytrichum but example is mentioned example is mentioned in your ncrt polytrichum is the example for your polytrichum is the example for your mosses remember that okay polytrichum now students if you look at uh, if you look at the main plant body of your funaria it is divided into rhizoids main axis leaf leaf like structures seta capsule this is your sporophyte and this is your gametophytic structure this part is your sporophytic structure gametophytic structure all of you know it is haploid in nature sporophyte is diploid in nature now liverworts were <coughs> dorsi ventral dorsi ventral in nature they were prostate can i call your funaria and your sphagnum erect plant body yes the plant body here is said to be what erect plant body is said to be erect here the plant body is said to be erect here the main important point of your uh, mosses is going to be spore germinates this line you will understand better when you read the when you do a cycle when we do the cycle you will understand this point even better that is spores germinate to form juvenile gametophyte called as protonema that is spores will develop into a stage called as your protonema stage it develop into a stage called as what protonema stage now question will come directly is the protonema haploid or diploid yes simple question protonema is said to be haploid in nature proteinema is said to be haploid in nature now one question can come does the proteinema is it independent or dependent is it independent or dependent remember proteinema is free living proteinema is free living it is green in color it is green in color it is what filamentous it is filamentous okay it is filamentous 
all of these points can be asked as a separate question all of these points can be asked separate question what is protonema okay so when i do the life cycle i want everyone to draw the life cycle with me and also write down these points about protonema and all of these points are from your ncrt i am not making anything extra from your module or anything ncrt lines question will be asked from ncrt only do not go external okay now that is protonema develops into the adult folio stage so we have spore spore will develop into protonema protonema will develop into a adult stage that is rhizoids are multicellular here very important line very important line because i told you in the case of liverworts in the case of liverworts rhizoids were unicellular but in the case of your mosses they're going to be multicellular as well as branch multicellular as well as branched leaves are arranged spirally leaves are arranged spirally that is if this is going to be your main stem on the main stem leaves are arranged in a spiral manner can you see leaves are arranged in a much more spiral manner here spiral arrangement of leaves can be seen in the case of your mosses clear that is your mosses now what about reproduction students how do you see reproduction here reproduction is very simple reproduction is very very simple that is students in the case of your vegetative fragmentation in both liverworts and mosses fragmentation can be seen in the case of liverworts as well as mosses fragmentation is common yes in the case of asexual this is where the change happen in the case of your liverworts we have a unicellular bud unicellular multicellular bud that is your gemme gemme germinate to form a new organism something called as gemma so in this gemma can you see this cup like structure in this gemma cup you have a small bud called as gemme or gemma okay gemme or gemma clear clear that is a gemma cup in the case of mosses we have protonema stage what about sexual reproduction oogamy in both liverworts and mosses oogamy is seen in the case of your liverworts and mosses these two are common the only difference is in asexual and only thing which you need to know is gemme cup in the case of marchantia and in the case of your mosses we see protonema stage we see protonema stage done now students liverworts i all told you most liverworts are dioecious in nature liverworts are said to be dioecious now what is the meaning of dioecious don't need to by heart listen to me di means two di means two if both the sex organs not gametes if both the sex organs antheridium and oogonium are present on two different thalli then they are called as dioecious then they are called as what dioecious clear that is male and female sex organs are found in different thalli in the case of your liverworts now you will ask me why is it important you will tell me why is it important it is important because when we do the life cycle we will consider this monoecious and dioecious condition okay repeat after me that is di means two so in the case of liverworts in the case of liverworts male and female sex organs are present on two different thalli two different thalli can you see antheridiophore and archegoniophore you can remember right marchantia antheridiophore archegoniophore two different thalli now students what about in the case of mosses in the case of mosses we have monoecious condition now what is this monoecious condition no need to by heart just remember no need to by heart mono means one mono means one if both the sex organs that is your antheridium and oogonium if they are present on the same thalli on one thalli it is called as monoecious both the sex organs are present on one thalli same plant or same thalli is called as your monoecious again this is important when you do the life cycle okay now can we do the life cycle students can we start with the life cycle if everyone is ready you open your book take your pen next to you take a book next to you write down drink some water and start i'll also drink some water drink some water and start 
Friends, questions will come from here. Questions will come from here. Remember, uh, see, I'm making you understand every single point of NCRT. What is bryophytes? What is liverworts? All of you know now. What is bryophytes? What happens in bryophytes? What is liverworts? What is mosses? But only next step for you to understand this concept is going to be your life cycle. Whatever I've written till now is NCRT lines. Whatever I'm going to draw is also going to be NCRT lines. But in a way you can understand. In a way you can understand the concept. Okay? Done. Now students, write down with me all of you. First is going to be your, first is going to be your liverworts. First one is going to be your liverworts. Now tell me quickly in the chat, what is the meaning of dioecious condition? Tell me in the chat, what is the meaning of dioecious? All of you know, the meaning of dioecious is when the two sex organs are present on two thalli. Yes, when two sex organs are present on two different thalli is called as dioecious condition. All of you know that. So, can I write a, let me draw. Part of the drawing, diagram, diagram cannot be that great. Students, this is going to be your female gametophyte. This is going to be your male gametophyte. Female gametophyte as well as male gametophyte. Now tell me, gametophyte is said to be haploid diploid. All of you know from the previous algae, gametophyte is always and always haploid in nature. Always and ha always haploid in nature. All of you know that? Very good. Now students, tell me in the chat, in your uh, female gametophyte, archegonium will grow or anthridium will grow? Or the female gametophyte, archegonium will grow. Archegonium will grow. Yes. Flask shaped structure, a flask shaped structure with a single egg cell. With a single egg cell. Can you see? This is your archegonium. Yes. And here we have the antheridium. We have the antheridium. Now, archegonium produce what? Archegonium will produce the single egg cell. Single egg cell. Yes. Now, what about antheridium? Antheridium will produce something called as biflagellated anthrozoites. Yes. Can we draw here? Biflagellated 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 anthrozoites. Now, students tell me, how does the anthrozoid, how does the anthrozoid reach here? Obviously, students, all of you know, the bryophytes are called as amphibians of plant kingdom because for the sexual reproduction, do they require water? Yes, they require water. So, the medium for transport of your biflagellated anthrozoids to your archegonium, to the egg cell is going to be, your medium is going to be water. The medium is going to be water. Correct, sir. Medium is going to be water. Now, what will happen when the archegonium, when the anthrozoid will fuse with the archegonium? Obviously, which will result in the formation of zygote. Let's draw the female gametophyte. Female gametophyte. Female gametophyte. And inside, what do we have now? Inside, we have the zygote. Inside, we have the zygote. Now, tell me in the chat, is the zygote diploid or haploid again? Simple question, students. Simple question. That is, zygote is going to be diploid in nature. Zygote is going to be diploid in nature. What is this? Fertilization. Fertilization. Zygote is going to be your diploid in nature. Correct, sir. Now, students, very important now. Now, this particular zygote, this particular will zygote will undergo mitosis. Will undergo mitosis to produce 
will undergo mitosis to produce a multicellular structure. Will undergo mitosis to produce a multicellular structure called as your sporophyte. Called as your sporophyte. See here. If this is the female gametophyte, female gametophyte, again, female gametophyte is 2N. This is your flash shape structure, gametophyte. From this, we have a multicellular structure called as your sporophyte. This is your sporophyte. Yes. Now, tell me in the chat, is the sporophyte diploid or haploid in nature? Tell me quickly, the sporophyte, all of you know, sporophyte is said to be diploid in nature. Sporophyte, sporophyte is diploid in nature. Now, this particular sporophyte, does it have different parts? Yes, sir. This is the foot region. We have rhizots here. Foot, seta, and capsule. Yes, it is divided into foot, seta, and capsule. Clear now, sir? Yes, sir. Clear. Now, what happens? Listen to me very carefully now. Carefully listen to me. Carefully listen to me. Now, inside this female gamete, inside this capsule, let me draw here. This is going to be your female gametophyte Fg, which is, oh, oh I don't know, 2N. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Hey, N. This is your female gametophyte, which is haploid in nature. Now, this particular is your sporophyte. Inside the sporophyte, inside the sporophyte, what happens is, meiosis what happens here meiosis takes place see obviously sporophyte will produce spores yes sporophyte will produce spores so inside the capsule meiosis inside capsule meiosis will happen where meiosis will happen inside the capsule which will release later on this capsule will burst open the capsule will burst open which will release all the spores which will release all the spores yes all the spores are released all the spores are released now tell me in the chat this was your sporophyte this was your sporophyte multicellular structure called as your sporophyte which was deployed in nature these spores are going to be haploid in nature because inside meiosis happened inside the capsule if meiosis is taking place the ploidy is obviously changing yes the ploidy is obviously changing so this will become spores this will be your haploid now this spores will undergo mitosis to produce it will undergo mitosis to produce your male and female gamete it will undergoes mitosis will undergo mitosis to produce your male gamete as well as your female gamete that is your entire life cycle that is your entire life cycle of your liver birth. that is it is dioecious in nature listen to me very carefully i will just recap this once in the case of your liver births, we have dioecious condition that is we have two different thalli. the two different thalli are there that is meaning of dioecious is both the sex organs are present on two different thalli. We have male gametophyte, female gametophyte. Male gametophyte has antheridium, female gametophyte has archegonium. Antheridium is producing biflagellated anthrozoids which will swim, swim in water and reach the egg cell. Archegonium is a flask shaped structure with a single egg cell. Once fertilization happens, we will get the zygote and zygote is said to be diploid in nature. Now, this zygote will undergo mitosis to produce the sporophyte. Will undergo mitosis to produce. Will undergo mitosis to produce your sporophyte. Now, this sporophyte, tell me in the chat, is the sporophyte dependent on the gametophyte? The answer is yes again. Just like your algae, just like your algae, here, sporophyte here, sporophyte is dependent on gametophyte. 
sporophyte is dependent on gametophyte. Can you see? Sporophyte is dependent on gametophyte. Now, this sporophyte is have foot seat and capsule. Inside the capsule, what happens? Inside the capsule, meiosis happens. That is, all the spores will undergo spore formation happens, and later on, in, in eventually, this capsule will burst open and it will release all the spores. It will release all the spores, and all the spores later undergo mitosis to produce your male and female gamete. Male and female gamete. Did you draw the cycle? Did you draw the cycle? Did you understand the cycle? Did all of you understand the cycle? This is how you learn. This is you learn the life cycle of a particular organism. Draw the cycle and understand every step how it is happening. Every step how it is happening. So can I go to the next one? Clear all of you. Any doubt you can ask me. Clear, sir, clear? Yes. Next one is going to be a monaceous condition. Next one is going to be your monaceous condition. Now, what is the meaning of monaceous condition? Tell me in the chat. Monaceous means what? Mono means one. Mono means one. When both the sex organs, when both the sex organs are present on the same thali, when both the sex organs are present on the same thali, it is called as monaceous. Yes, students. So can I draw here monaceous? All of you also please take out a notebook and write down and draw this. Write down and draw this. Okay, let's draw one thali now. This is remember your mosses are erect structures. Mosses are erect. Remember, mosses are gonna be erect and they have spiral leaf arrangement. Yes, they have something called as your spiral leaf arrangement. They have erect and spiral leaf arrangement, stem like structure. Now, on the stem like structure, on the stem like structure, there are branches. Yes, there are branches here. So, on this branches, on this branches, can you notice, can you notice, this is your gametophyte. Gametophyte which is haploid in nature. Gametophyte which is haploid in nature. Here we have something called as rhizoids. We have the rhizoids. Now, what is this? Tell me in the chat quickly. What is this flask like structure? This flask like structure is your archegonium. Is your archegonium and this is your antheridium. Antheridium. Antheridium will produce what? Biflagellated anthrozoids. Anthridium will produce what? Biflagellated anthrozoids. Now, these biflagellated anthrozoids, will they swim in water? Yes, sir. They can swim in water and reach the archegonium. Yes, sir. They will reach the archegonium, which has the single egg cell. When the biflagellated anthrozoids swim and reach the egg cell, will they undergo fertilization? Yes, sir. They will undergo fertilization, which will result in the formation of zygote, which will result in the formation of zygote. Fertilization and we have the same structure here. What do we have here? We have the zygote. Zygote is two in nature. Now remember what happened previously. How was sporophyte developed? Sporophyte was developed because the particular zygote underwent a mitosis to produce a sporophyte. Yes, if you look here previously. <clears throat> zygote underwent mitosis. Here also, the zygote will undergo mitosis. Undergo mitosis to produce your sporophyte. Let me draw this zygote this side now. <clears throat> I'm drawing this this side, okay, now because I don't have space here. On this particular female archegonium. We have the sporophyte. 
what do we have the we have the sporophyte so this particular zygote this zygote will develop zygote will develop and get develop into the sporophyte multicellular sporophyte again the sporophyte has foot theta and capsule foot theta and capsule again similarly previously what happened inside the capsule meiosis happened yes similarly what happens here now inside the capsule similarly inside the capsule what happens meiosis happens let me write down meiosis happens this for inside the capsule inside capsule which will result in the formation of spores and these spores are going to be haploid in nature this sporophyte was diploid in nature this is the female this is the thallus this is the thallus thallus and thallus is what your gametophyte gametophyte is what gametophyte is your gametophyte is haploid in nature gametophyte is haploid here we have a capsule we have the sporophyte which is diploid in nature and we have the spores now these spores will undergo now mitosis to produce these spores will develop into these spores will develop into a structure called as your protonema will develop into a structure called as your protonema this is your protonema can you see now i asked you a question before protonema is haploid or diploid or we told you you told me protonema was said to be haploid in nature why because it's developing from the sporophyte and obviously if spores so no from spores spores are spores are haploid in nature so protonema is also going to be haploid in nature it is also going to be haploid in nature and i already, I already made you write down it is free living green color green color right it is filamentous it is also filamentous right now this protonema will later develop something called as buds can you see small small buds will develop on this protonema lateral buds there is something called as lateral buds lateral buds will develop now each lateral bud can you see each lateral bud will give rise to the gametophyte each lateral bud each lateral bud here can give rise to the gametophyte each lateral bud will give rise to a gametophyte that is your entire structure that is your entire structure okay that is your entire structure let me recap again we have the gametophyte plant body and which is monoecious in nature that is both the sex organs are present on the same thalli same thalli archegonium archegonium and antheridium 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 then we have what archegonium antheridium is producing your biflagellated anthrozoids and archegonium is producing a single egg cell in a flask shaped structure all of you know that now what happens here fertilization happens fertilization will result in the formation of zygote now this particular zygote will undergo mitosis mitosis to produce the sporophyte zygote will undergo mitosis to produce the sporophyte a sporophyte is diploid in nature a sporophyte has three parts foot theta and capsule foot theta and capsule inside the capsule what happens meiosis takes place which is in the formation of spores meiosis inside the capsule and spores will directly develop into spores will directly develop into protonema stage what is protonema stage here free living green and filamentous now this protonema stage will later develop a lateral buds and each lateral bud can develop into a gametophyte again haploid haploid and haploid ploidy is maintained everywhere ploidy is maintained every single place that is your bryophytes that is your mosses that is your mosses can anyone answer this question now can anyone answer this question that is going to be your the main plant body in the case of your bryophyte is going to be one set of chromosomes one pair of chromosomes two set of chromosomes two pairs of chromosomes what is the answer 
all of us know the main plant body in the case of your bryophyte is your gametophyte and gametophyte is haploid in nature gametophyte is haploid in nature so it is one set of chromosomes it is one set of chromosomes clear what is the importance now what is the importance of your what is the importance of bryophytes now what is the, why are bryophytes when used answer is very simple that is decomposition rocks can make the substrate suitable for growth of higher plants that is bryophytes are involved bryophytes are involved in ecological succession bryophytes are involved in ecological succession then we have it prevents the soil, soil erosion by formation of dense mat that reduce the impact of falling rain that is they com make complete mat so that the water loss is not though that the top soil is not lost then we have food for herbaceous mammals birds and other anything apart from all this which has been asked repeatedly is going to be your peat moss also called as your sphagnum peat is obtained from sphagnum it is used for your fuel in your fuel and in gardening fuel as well as gardening right it is it, you can burn the peat to obtain the heat you can also use it in gardening to absorb more water and due to high water holding capacity it is used for packaging material for trans shipment of living material it is also involved for packaging also involved for packaging clear now let's see one more question now that is gametophyte shows protonema and leafy stage in where do you obtain the protonema stage is it in the ferns liverworts mosses or hostels where do you obtain the gametophyte that is your protonema stage tell me quickly protonema stage is obtained in your mosses all of us know then we have in mosses meiosis occur in the case of your mosses where does the meiosis takes place meiosis is mainly occurring in your spore formation we just learned in your in the formation of spore formation in the capsule region in the capsule region okay so that is the end of your bryophytes done algae is also done now we'll start with pteridophytes can we start again pteridophytes is very simple very very simple pteridophytes very simple pteridophytes only thing which you need to know is the life cycle and the few points here and there and i'll make you understand the few points here and there and everything else so can we start our students can we start show some energy i feel all of you went down the drain all of you like all the energy which was there in the starting is everything is gone now all the energy in the starting to start you know plant kingdom when you do when will you do plant kingdom sir plant kingdom is very important chapter yes it is important chapter if you understand the chapter don't mug it up don't have to and like you know go through read so much no this is how you learn plant kingdom draw the cycles understand learn the ncert lines important lines learn the examples yes learn the examples learn each and every example okay now let's start with pteridophytes now now till now bryophytes and and your algae bryophytes and algae did they have vascular system did your algae as well as your bryophytes did they have xylem and phloem no the first plants the first type of plants the first type of plants to have your vascular system was your where is it pteridophytes the first plants to have vascular system was your pteridophytes when i say vascular system or vascular plants i mean xylem and phloem i mean xylem as well as your phloem so xylem and phloem was first obtained where <coughs> xylem and phloem were first seen in the case of your xylem and phloem were first seen in the case of your pteridophytes okay now where do you find pteridophytes next question is where do you find pteridophytes just like your bryophytes just like your bryophytes pteridophytes are also seen in the case of your moist shady forest yes they can also be seen in the small small between small small rocks can you see this, this is one rock this is one more rock between the two rocks between the two rocks that is in the crevices in the crevices of the rocks you find the pteridophytes now have you seen the <clears throat> we can also be found in the can you see this is the water body in the water body we can see the marshy areas we can the bogs and marshy areas 
also we can find the pteridophytes. Pteridophytes can also be seen on the tree trunks. If this is the one large tree, on the tree trunks you can see your pteridophytes can be growing. That is called as your epiphytes. That is called as your epiphytes. But have you seen this Jurassic World movie? Yes. In this Jurassic World movie, if you notice in the background, can you see here? Can you see notice here? Somewhere in the background here. And here, can you see notice here? In this Jurassic World movie, in the background, do you see the ferns? Yes, sir. It means that the ferns are that old. The ferns are actually older than your angiosperms. They are actually older than your angiosperms. That's how old are the ferns. That's how old are the ferns. Now, let's understand. Let's try to understand the what are the different parts of the ferns. Let's understand the what does the pteridophytes look like? What does the pteridophytes look like? Now, students, all of you should know by now, until your bryophytes, the main plant body is thalloid. Until bryophytes, the main plant body is said to be thalloid. But after the pteridophytes, the main plant body can be seen much more differentiated. That is, here we have almost, almost root-like structure. We have almost roots here called as your rhizome. We have root like structure called as your rhizome here. We have leaf like structure called as fronds. What do we have? We have leaf like structure also called as leaves. Fronds are also called as your leaves. Those are called as leaves, also called as fronds. Those are the leaves. Then we also have the stem like structure. Can you see? Stem like structure. So, when we come to bryophytes, so when we come to pteridophytes, the main plant body is much more differentiated because of the evolution. Because of the evolution, the main plant body is much more differentiated here. Differentiated plant body. Clear? Now, here students, let's understand the function of each one of them. That is, what is the function of stem? Oh, I told uh, root, right, roots are separate, sorry. Roots are separate here. I, I read it as rhizoid, that's why, rhizoid. So, we have roots separate here. Rhizome is your stem actually. Rhizome is your stem, fronds are leaf and we have separate roots here. Clear, roots, roots are separate. Now, what is the function of stem? The function of stem is very simple. That is, it will help in holding the entire leaf, it will support the leaf and sometimes it can be photosynthetic also. Sometimes it can be photosynthetic. But what is the function of roots? And what are roots here? Here roots, uh, roots can be advantageous roots, but there is no tap root here. So in the case of your pteridophytes, in the case of pteridophytes, there is no tap root. Only and only we have the advantageous roots. We only and only have the advantageous roots. All of us know function of roots. The main function of the roots here is the anchorage. As function is absorption of water as well as nutrients as well as the anchorage. That is the function of roots here. Now, what about the leaves? I already told you, leaves are also called as what? Leaves are also called as your fronds here. That is, leaves are also called as fronds. Can you see this leaf, beautiful leaf? They are called as fronds. But what is the function of leaf? Typically, Typically, every single leaf has one function, that is to do photosynthesis. All of you know, the main function of leaf is to do photosynthesis, all of you know that. But what is the other function of leaf? The other function of leaf, in the case of your pteridophytes, is going to be your help in reproduction. So, you can ask me now, sir, how? How do they help in fertilization? How do they help in reproduction? Because in the case of pteridophytes, in the case of pteridophytes, they have a special type of leaf. The special type of leaf is called as your sporophyll. It is called as what? Sporophyll. So, if you look at the leaf here, and if you turn the leaf, if you take the leaf and you turn the leaf behind the leaf, behind the leaf, you can notice small, small, round, round structures. Can you see? Small, small, round, round structures behind the leaf. That is called as your sporangia. That is called as your sporangia and the, the round and structure is called as sporangia. But the entire special leaf or we can call this a fertile leaf, 
this fertile or special leaf is called as your sporophyll it is called as what sporophyll the special leaf right the special leaf is called as your special leaf is called as your sporophyll it's called as your sporophyll special leaf structure is called as your sporophyll also called as your fertile leaf and if you look at the back side of this fertile leaf you can see for it can you see this round and structures on the leaf they are called as your sporangia they are called as what sporangia students this is the point if you do not understand you cannot understand the rest of the part so if you have any doubts you can ask me right now or you can ask me at the end of the video at the end of the video also you can ask me the doubts but remember we have a special type of leaf called as sporophyll and this sporophyll on the back side will have sporangia will have what sporangia now when this all the sporophyll when all the sporophyll many many sporophylls come together imagine we have one leaf here one leaf here when all the different different leaves come together they form a structure called as strobili also called as cone when all the sporophyll come together they make a structure called as your strobilus also called as cone so if they ask you what is a cone cone is nothing but a collection of sporophyll cone is nothing but your collection of sporophyll clear spore sp strobilus or cone is a collection of strob of your sporophyll example example is your equisetum and selaginella example is selaginella and equisetum in the selaginella and equisetum you can find the cones and if you are in my telegram channel you might have seen a image of it when i was working on this strobilus or when i was working when, when i was working on equisetum and selaginella i took a lot of pictures of this and i think uh, probably like a month back on my telegram channel i uploaded a pictures of this i added a pictures of your strobilus okay now the main concept the main concept which everyone should understand the main concept which you everyone should understand for the pteridophyte is going to be your homospory and heterospory the main uh, thing you need to understand is homospory and heterospory now what is this homospory homo means same when they have same type of spores when they have same type of spores the category is called as homospory now what is this heterospory in type of heterospory we find two types of spores hetero means different when there are two types of spores it is called as heterospory clear sir now here we have only small spores but in the case of heterospory we have a microspore we also have a megaspore we have a microspore and we have a megaspore in the case of your heterospory point clear the next point everyone should understand the next point everyone should understand here is very important star statement it gives rise to a bisexual gametophyte now what is this bisexual gametophyte listen to me very carefully listen to me very very carefully this is where it can completely change bisexual condition is like your monaceous condition bisexual condition is like your monaceous condition in which the both the sex organs both the sex organs are present on one thalli both sex organs are present on one thalli in the case of your homospory both sex organs are present on one thalli example is your seen in majority of pteridophytes seen in your majority of pteridophytes now important line in the case of your heterospory it can produce a microspore will produce male gametophyte megaspore will produce female gametophyte so in the case of heterospory we have two different gametophytes if we have male gametophyte antheridium will produce on the male gametophyte if we have female gametophyte separate the archegonium will be separate so this is your dioecious condition this is your dioecious condition that is male and the female sex organs are present on two different thalli obviously male thalli is there and female thalli is there clear male thalli is separate female thalli is separate here that is in the case of your heterospory example is selaginella and salvinia pyq need pyq example for heterospory is going to be selaginella and 
salvinia students these two points are very important if you if you want to understand the life cycle if you want to understand the life cycle remember one spore one gametophyte two spores two gametophyte clear two spores two gametophyte clear now can we start a life cycle now can we start a life cycle first we'll do life cycle for your homosporous type let's do a life cycle of your homosporous homosporous type now before i start the homosporous type quickly drink some water all of you quickly drink some water all of you quickly drink some water and take a page take a separate page all of you take a separate page separate page for your homospore because this is where you need to write again this is where you need to write a lot again okay white yes now students let me draw fern mm -hmm. if this is a fern If this is a fern, yes, it will have, this is your rounds, this is your rhizome and we have the roots, we have the roots. Now tell me in the chat, tell me in the chat, if this fern, this is the main plant body this is the main plant body of the fern is it gametophyte or is it sporophyte first question all of you remember from this point onwards from this point onwards that is from pteridophytes onwards the main plant body is gonna be sporophyte the main plant body is gonna be what this is a fern the main plant body is gonna be sporophyte the main plant body was going to be sporophyte and this sporophyte is going to be two n in nature sporophyte is going to be two n in nature clear now this particular frond we have a special frond example we have a special frond here we have a very special frond the special frond is called as what the fertile frond is called as your sporophyll it's called as your sporophyll sporophyll the sporophyll have what the sporophyll have sporangia yes sir the sporophyll have sporangia imagine round structure we have a sporangia now what happened listen to me very carefully what happens here this was your sporangia sporangia is part of your sporophyte sporangia is part of your sporophyte sporangia is also diploid in nature now what happens listen to me very carefully inside sporangia meiosis occur inside the sporangia inside the sporangia meiosis is taking place to produce the spores to produce the spores these are your spores and spores are going to be your haploid in nature yes the spores are remain going to be haploid now these spores will undergo mitosis again now now these are the meiosis happen see this is your 2n 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 they are undergoing mitosis to produce your one structure like this can anyone tell me what is the structure in the case of your in the case of your in the case of your homospory type in the case of your homosporous type the spores are undergoing mitosis the spores are undergoing mitosis to produce one structure that is called as can anyone tell me in the chat what is the structure we obtain 
दिस स्ट्रक्चर इज कॉल्ड एज योर लेट मी चेंज द कलर प्रोथैलस इट इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट प्रोथैलस एंड दिस प्रोथैलस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज योर गैमिटो फाइट इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज वॉट गैमिटो फाइट ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज वॉट गैमिटो फाइट क्लियर गैमिटो फाइट इन नेचर नाउ it was supposed to be green in color inside this uh, inside this inside this prothallus we can find chlorophyll yes prothallus has chlorophyll inside now can i tell it can i call it free living yes sir we can call it free living in nature free living and independent free living as well as independent let me write on green here it is green in color it is free living in nature prothallus is free living see here this was yen mitosis will the ploidy change no sir the ploidy will need change the ploidy will remain as n so this was yen mitosis so prothallus is also haploid in nature prothallus is also haploid in nature it is gametophyte it is also called as your gametophyte it is free living nature it is green in nature it is very small and inconspicuous it is very small and inconspicuous and inconspicuous and it is very short lived it is very short lived it is very short lived and it is also multicellular it is also multicellular in nature so remember students whenever sporangia is undergoing meiosis to produce the spores spores are undergoing mitosis to produce your prothallus they are producing undergoing mitosis to produce the sprothallus a prothallus is a structure which is also called as your gametophyte structure now this gametophyte structure is free living small and inconspicuous short lived and it is green in color it can do photosynthesis and it is multicellular in nature it is free living it is independent it is what we call it independent now students this prothallus is a gametophyte now tell me on the gametophyte can we get on the gametophyte plant body can we get antheridium and oogonium sorry antheridium and archegonium yes sir till now we learnt we have a gametophyte if this is a gametophytic plant body gametophyte plant body we can get a flask shaped archegonium flask shaped archegonium and we can also get a antheridium we can also get an antheridium now this antheridium will produce this antheridium will produce biflagellated anthrozoites biflagellated anthrozoites and this biflagellated anthrozoites will swim and reach the egg cell yes they will reach the central egg cell they will reach the central egg cell which will result in the formation of zygote again this is your prothallus which is haploid in nature also called as your gametophyte also called as your gametophyte what happens now we have the will undergo mitosis to finally produce your sporophyte finally produce your sporophyte and students remember the most important point here that is first time in history first time in history first time in history both sporophyte and gametophyte are independent are independent both of them that is sporophyte and gametophyte first time in history ever can you see this is your sporophyte green color leaves it can do photosynthesis it can survive on its own big time yes it can survive then we have your prothallus which is also your gametophyte it is green color it has photosynthesis it can do chloro it has chlorophyll so it is also independent so if they ask you a question in the case of your homospory 
in the case of your homospory the gametophyte and the sporophyte which one is which one of them is independent they'll give you option number 1 sporophyte option number 2 gametophyte option number 3 both are independent option number 4 nothing is independent your answer should be option number 3 both are independent that is both sporophyte and gametophyte are independent in the case of your homospores or homospory clear do you want do you want me to summarize this once do you want me to summarize the entire thing once or all of you understood very students i wrote down very slowly very slowly i am writing down so that everyone should understand right everyone should understand the concept if i hurry this you will not understand okay now let's understand heterospory now let's understand heterospory okay let's understand heterospory now heterospory i told you what does it where heterospory what happens in heterospory see here in heterospory two type of spores small microspore and a large megaspore it give rise to a megaspore gives male gametophyte megaspore microspore male gametophyte megaspore female gametophyte and this is your dioecious this is a dioecious condition dioecious condition right mm, let me take green only let me draw one small uh, plant here okay heterospore let's take selaginella for example selaginella for example If this is your selaginella imagine this is your selaginella plant body selaginella plant body this is your main plant body tell me quickly in the chat is the main plant body haploid or diploid the main plant body is going to be hap diploid here that is sporophyte this is your this is your selaginella this is your selaginella sporophyte which is diploid in nature sporophyte diploid in nature now this sporophyte will produce this sporophyte will produce two type of sporangia they will produce what two types of sporangia one is your microsporangia can you see here one is your microsporangia and other one is your megasporangia Yeah, this is your sporangia four. Yes, this is your entire cone. If this is the one big cone, on this one big cone, we'll have one megafil and one microfil. Yes, we have two type of leaves here. I think I missed that point. Oh, let me miss that point somewhere. I didn't tell, is it? Ah, I mentioned here. See here, leaves can be microfil and megafil. Microfil and megafil. Microfil means small leaves. Megafil means large leaf. Megafil means large leaf. Okay. Now we have microfil and megafil. They will produce microsporangia and megasporangia will be there. Okay. Now this is the small sporangia. Can I also write small sporangia? This is your large. sporangia this is your large sporangia this is small sporangia clear now this small sporangia also called as microsporangia will undergo see this is your diploid structure diploid structure remember diploid structure always 90% time undergoes meiosis this will undergo meiosis undergoes meiosis to produce the microspores remember small sporangia will produce microspores large sporangia will produce megaspores microspore yes microspore is going to be your n now here we just learnt we learnt here microspore produces male gametophyte yes so microspore will produce what microspore will give rise to the male gametophyte this is your male gameto fight yes we have male gametophyte now on top of this male gametophyte on top of this male gametophyte can we have antheridium yes we can have antheridium antheridium now this antheridium will produce biflagellated anthrozoites 
Yes. Does produce your biflagellated anthrozoites. Biflagellated anthrozoites. Okay. Biflagellated anthrozoites. That is your mega gametophyte. So a male gametophyte. Okay, microspore. Now, students, what about your large sporangia? Large sporangia will also undergo meiosis. Will also undergo meiosis. Also undergo meiosis. Will also undergo meiosis to produce your microspore here. So here megaspore. Megaspore, which is again haploid in nature because meiosis takes place. This megaspore will develop into female gametophyte. Develop into the female gametophyte. Now, this female gametophyte is again haploid in nature. It is haploid in nature. Yes, it is haploid in nature. It will produce a flash shape structure called as your flash shape structure called as your archegonium. Archegonium. Yes, flash shape structure called as your archegonium. Ravindrani, I will tell you one second. One second, one second. Tell me here, see here, here both sex organs are present on same thalli. Yes, in the case of your homospory, both uh, sex organs are present on same thalli. Monaceous, monaceous. Yes, here can you see both sex organs are present on different thalli. Male gametophyte, female gametophyte. That is dioecious. So heterospory, dioecious. Remember that. Heterospory, dioecious. Remember that. Till here is everything point clear to all of you. Till here everything is clear. If you do not understand till here, it's going to be difficult because we know in heterospory, the cellular example, sporophyte. Sporophyte will have two types of what? Sporophyll. One is microsporophyll and megasporophyll. Yes. In microsporophyll, we have the, we have once, if this is the cone, if this is the sporophyll, in this large sporophyll, we can have small sporangia and large sporangia. Simple. Small sporangia will undergo meiosis to produce your microspore. Microspore will produce the male gametophyte. Clear? Large sporangia will undergo meiosis to produce megas megaspore and megaspore will develop into female gametophyte. That is, will produce your archegonia. Male gametophyte will produce your antheridia. Till here, everything should be clear. Till here, everything should be clear. Nothing. No rocket science here. If this is the cone, imagine this is the cone on one cone, on, since this is heterospory, two types of spores. Remember, heterospory means two types of spores. One is your microspore, one is your megaspore. And spores develop from sporangia. So we have a small sporangia and large sporangia. Microspore will produce male gametophyte. Megaspore, megaspore will produce female gametophyte. Remember, in heterospory, we have Two types of spores. That is heterospory, right? That is the meaning of heterospory. Two types of spores. And your female gametophyte will produce female gametes. That is one central XL here. Can you see? Central XL here. Central one XL. And we have archegonium. We have antheridium here. Antheridium is producing biflagellated anthrozoites. Till here, everything should be clear because next point is very important. That is. here this female gametophyte see here i told you male gametophyte is releasing anthrozoites okay in the case of your in the case of your heterospory for the first time ever the female gametophyte is retained inside the sporangia the female gametophyte here Let me write it here somewhere. I'll draw the structure here. Let me draw the structure and uh, make you understand. If this was your sporophyll, this is your sporophyll, right? This is your sporophyll. Sporophyll. 
Now, what is the sporophyll? Sporophyll is a special type of leaf. Sporophyll is a special type of leaf which has the sporangia on it. Yes, sir. Sporophyll is a special type of leaf which will have the sporangia on it. If this is a sporangia, everywhere else till now, everywhere else till now, in every life cycle, female gametophyte and the male gametophyte were completely independent, were separated out, were completely separated out till now in uh, algae, in bryophytes and even in the case of homospory, see here we learnt, in the case of your homospory, we have separate, can you see prothylus is separated out, remained out, is it inside the sporangia, no, it was not retained inside sporangia, the gametophyte was separate, but, 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 in the case of your heterospory, in the case of your heterospory, for the first time ever, the female gametophyte, can you see, the female gametophyte is actually, retained inside the sporangia. This is your sporangia students. This is your sporangia. Sporangia. All this step, meiosis, megaspore development, megaspore development, female gametophyte development, everything is happening inside the sporangia. Everything is happening inside the sporangia here. Clear? We have the female gametophyte here female gametophyte which is haploid in nature which is haploid in nature now on this we have flask shape structure now what happens this particular anthrozoites particular anthrozoites will come yes anthrozoites will come which will result which will result in the formation of zygote which will result in the formation of zygote later on which will result in the formation of zygote where do I write zygote now can we write here let's write this side Let's take this particular diagram here. Very difficult to draw, but because this diagram came in the middle, we'll draw it here. Okay, this will result in the formation of zygote. Students, remember the zygote is again deployed in nature, and the zygote here. Can you see zygote? Zygote is deployed in nature, and development of zygote and the embryo development is also happening inside the sporangia that is the important female gametophyte the female gametophyte is retained inside the sporangia that line everyone should understand input in your brain because that is called as seed habitat that is called as what seed habitat so seed habitat started when seed habitat started in the heterospory seed habitat started in the heterospory condition clear on that heterospory condition that is the zygote here zygote and development in the embryo embryo development embryo development all that happens inside the sporangia now this particular embryo undergoes mitosis eventually mitosis eventually to produce the complete cellular body complete cellaginella body complete cellaginella body that's how the entire life cycle of your heterospory works can you see the entire cycle of your heterospory first we have the cellaginella plant yes it is said to be dioecious in condition that is on the same cone on the same we have the same cone on the one cone it has small sporangia and large sporangia on the same cone we have small sporangia large sporangia small sporangia undergoes meiosis to produce your microspore last sporangia undergoes meiosis to produce your megaspore again haploid haploid because meiosis is happening last sporangia is deployed here deployed here microsporangia produces male gametophyte megasporangia produces female gametophyte male gametophyte produces anthridium and biflagellated anthrozoites clear now students in the female gametophyte the female gametophyte is producing your archegonium but the female gametophyte is not released outside. The female gametophyte, in the case of your heterospory, is retained inside the sporangia. Female gametophyte is retained inside the sporangia. This is your sporophyll. 2N condition. 2N condition. And this is sporangia. Again, 2N. Yes, this is your female gametophyte, which is N. And female gametophyte is retained inside the sporangia and this particular development development of zygote development of embryo is also happening inside the 
sporangia inside a sporangia and later on undergoes mitosis to produce the selaginella all of you can you notice one thing here now can you notice one thing here one thing very specifically gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte that's right first time in history again first time in history first time in history that is gametophyte is dependent gametophyte is dependent on sporophyte on your sporophyte first time in history students first time in history of your entire evolution of plants gametophyte gametophyte again gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte that is in the case of your heterospory that in the case of your heterospory here can you see in the case of homospory in the case of homospory for the first time ever both male gametophyte and gametophyte and sporophyte were independent both were independent here but in the case of your heterospory gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte what about bryophytes and bryophytes and algae in bryophytes and algae sporophyte is dependent on gametophyte that remember food cita capsule that was dependent on the gametophyte but for the first time in history ever that is first time in history in the case of your heterospory condition in your selaginella gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte first time in history evolution is happening students in front of your eyes evolution is happening now what is the economic classification it's given in your ncrt that's why it's mentioned here that is silopsida pteridophytes can be cl further classified pteridophytes can be further classified into silopsida example is silotum lycopsida lycopodium cephenopsida equisetum and pteropsida adiantum adiantum is the example students they can ask you one question from here also so remember this example remember these examples that is silopsida is silotum lycopsida is lycopodium cephenopsida is your equisetum and pteropsida is adiantum adiantum clear ha huh. clear now we have ecolo ecological and economic importance of your pteridophytes ornamentation coal formation habitat and or habitat for organisms food building material and also heavy metal absorption as well as heavy metal absorption clear heavy metal absorption again i have mentioned here separately if you want okay if you look at the diagram just given your ncrt it shows you the pteridophytes selaginella here this is your equisetum equisetum can you see cone formation equisetum selaginella also there should be a cone formation here then we have fern as well as we have salvinia salvinia shows what heterospory salvinia shows heterospory important heterospory clear let's see some questions let's see some questions now can we see some questions which of the following plant produces cones or strobilus cone or strobilus seen where funaria sphagnum equisetum terrace the answer is very simple again it's going to be your equisetum we just told you i just told you in equisetum here equisetum strobilus clear fern's prothallus the prothallus rhizoid sporophyll gametophyte or sporophyte we learned right prothallus in the case of homospory prothallus is short lived multicellular in nature green color independent also called as your gametophyte prothallus is also called as your gametophyte remember that i made you right also see i made you right i forgot i didn't make you right as yes, i made you right see prothallus is gametophyte clear so with that being said the entire pteridophyte is also over do you realize we are finishing one part after another first algae done bryophytes done two cycles pteridophytes done two cycles homospory and heterospory every lab ncrt is also being covered okay now the last part of the chapter is going to be gymnosperms which is very important so can we start can we start students 
no taking break let's finish the entire thing no breaks needed right next one is your gymnosperms what are gymnosperms first of all what are gymnosperms if they ask you a question what are gymnosperms you should know they are plants with naked seeds plants with naked seeds now what are the meaning of naked seeds the meaning of naked seeds is nothing but a plant right a plant will a seed will not have a outer covering that is it will not have a mesocarp it will not have a fruit around it it will seed will not have a fruit around it that is called as naked seed i remember students here i told you heteros can you see this part this cycle here the retaining of your female gametophyte is the main reason for seed habitat now one question arises here if the female gametophyte was retained inside the sporangia why don't we see seeds in the case of your pteridophytes the reason we don't see seeds in the case of your pteridophytes is because there is no seed coat formation do you see any seed coat formation here no seed coat formation the seed coat formation will only happen when there is what integuments when there is only integuments no integuments no seed formation no integuments no seed formation remember that here in the case of your gymnosperms there is seed formation there is first seed plants they are called as what first seed plants okay they are called as what first seed plants because they have integuments okay first seed plants they are also vascular plants just like your pteridophytes they are vascular plants that is they have xylem and phloem differentiated into plant body well defined root shoot and leaves what is the habitat dry and cold conditions dry and cold conditions now students the question the main question will only and only come from the following slides that is what about the root sir how is the root here in the case of your gymnosperms in the case of your gymnosperms roots generally it is tap root generally it is tap root symbiotic association can be seen in the case of roots what type of roots symbiotic association example fungal that is mycorrhiza in the case of pinus can you see here this this is a pinus roots in the roots of the pinus we can see a fungus development a fungus development mycorrhiza mycorrhiza okay that is fungal mycorrhiza in pinus and nitrogen fixation cyanobacteria in the case of your cycus c4 cyanobacteria c4 cycus c4 chloride roots c4 chloride roots so in the case of cycus in the case of cycus we have something called as chloride roots now what are these chloride roots chloride roots are basically roots which has cyanobacteria infestation look at the bacteria can you see thick roots these thick roots are basically because of your cyanobacteria association so in the case of your cycus called as chloride roots which has cyanobacterial association example anabina nostoc anabina and nostoc it is nitrogen fixing done the next point is your stem which type of stem do we have obviously gymnosperms are erect gymnosperms are said to be erect in nature and they have unbranched condition in the case of your cycus cycus has unbranched condition but in the case of your cedrus and pinus cedrus and pinus we have branched condition we have the branched condition one more question is sicovia sicovia is a red wood tree which is the tallest tree red wood tree that is a gymnosperm sicovia okay then we have leaves see root done stem done leaves leaves here are very peculiar that is they can be simple leaf or compound leaf they can be simple leaf or compound leaf but what you need to notice here is the adaptation of leaf example needle like leaf we can see needle like leaf in the case of your pinus that is needle like leaf is present to slow snow cannot sit on the leaf see i told you have you noticed christmas tree have you noticed christmas tree if you notice christmas tree can the snow sit on this christmas tree no 
small small leaf are there since this type of plants are no, no, obtained or noticed in your cold conditions so needle like leaf when the snow comes the snow will just fall from here the, sn the snow will just fall yes sir the snow will just fall true so needle like leaf the snow will just fall the other condition i told you the other condition i told you was this plants are also found in your dry condition if there is reduced area reduced water loss yes reduced area reduced water loss then we have thick cuticle thick cuticle can be present on the leaf waxy coating on the leaves prevent water loss again in dry conditions then we also have succulent stomata reduced water loss then all of these are adaptations which you already know in the case of your gymnosperms now can we draw one one slide in which all the questions will be asked from gymnosperms one slide of you one slide which will have all the questions covered okay i have made this slide deliberately so that all the p by q's can be covered in this one slide that is cycus versus pinus can we do can we do let me take pen color yeah white here first one is your cycus first one is your cycus this is your pinus students in your gymnosperms in your gymnosperms questions can come from this slide here question can come from this slide or the flow chart or the life cycle which i'll be telling you so do this one slide all the questions will be covered if you go check your neat pyqs every question is more or less from here only okay cycus and pinus now what about the stem in the cycus the stem in the case of cycus is unbranched you see here see here cycus can you see single unbranched stem single unbranched can you see single unbranched stem here the stem is what said to be unbranched unbranched stem unbranched stem now what about pinus in the case of pinus the stem is branched the stem is branched now what about the leaf leaf i told you in the case of cycus it is a type of compound leaf like a pinnately compound leaf pinnately compound leaf they'll be like this pinnately compound leaf now what about the leaf here leaf in the case of your pinus i told you needle like leaf needle like leaf in the case of your leaf in the case of your pinus is going to be needle like leaf clear so leaf stem leaf and stem next one is going to be roots very important because questions have come from here very important what about the roots in the case of your cycus in the case of cycus we have something called as coloroid roots we have what do we have we have coloroid roots now what are these coloroid roots coloroid roots can do what n2 fixing they can do nitrogen fixing because they have something called as cyanobacteria in them they have cyano bacteria they have cyano bacteria what is this dot such a huge dot they have the cyano bacteria now what about roots in the case of your pinus it has mycorrhizal assignment as a micro mycorrhizal association mycorrhizal association now this mycorrhizal association right it will help you now basically it will help in the roots to absorb more and more nutrients and water more and more nutrients and water now students in the case of your cycus the main plant body is mainly dioecious main plant body here is dioecious the, the when i say dioecious um the male and the female cone will be present together okay male and female cone will be present together but that is not very important then i'll ask question from that let's just write we have a male cone here we have a male cone 
but we do not have a female cone here. We can have a male cone here. We can have a male cone here, but we have a megasporophyll here. We have a mega sporophyll here. We cannot get a female cone here. Female cone is generally absent here. Okay. Let me write that point also. Dioecious. Dioecious and unisexual. Easy to understand. Dioecious and unisexual. Here we have male and female cone. male and female cone. It is mostly monaceous, monaceous and bisexual, easy to understand. Monaceous and bisexual. Now, what is the meaning of monaceous? Mono means one, mono means one, right. When two main, two uh, sex organs are present on same uh, thallus, it is called as monaceous. Yes, the session will end in next 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes maximum, 15 minutes. Now students, all the questions are covered here. All the questions for your pinus and psychus are covered in this one slide here. Everything which you need to know. And if you look at your NCRD, we have given example is your psychus, pinus and they have given you Jinko, Jinko biloba which is also called as your living fossil. Because it is present from very long time, very, very long time it has been present, Jinko biloba. Okay. That is
Check, 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 check. Am I audible, students? Now, am I audible? Am I audible? Sound check, sound check. Done. What happened? Okay, it's fine. Audible? Okay. Students, was this part done? Did everyone understand? So, can we start with life cycle now? Can we start with the life cycle of gymnosperms? sperms, the last topic for today? And uh, it's okay, right? <laughs> it's okay, right? Amazing. Till here, I believe everything was clear, right? Till here, everything was clear. All of us learned about, all of you learned, right, this one. All of you learned all of this, yes. And all of us learned about what are spores. So in the case of your gymnosperms, we have the cone. And the cone is called as your sporophyll. Basically, this is the sporophyll, which has the female cone. Okay, now, can we start the life cycle of gymnosperms? Till here everything was clear, right? Till here everything was clear now. So can we start with the life cycle now? Please show some energy. This is going to be the last topic which I teach today. The last topic which I will be teaching today is your life cycle of your gymnosperms. And students, trust me, in gymnosperms, the question will only and only come from the one slide which I made you write and the life cycle. Life cycle also very rarely, but I want all of you to understand the concept. Okay? Okay. Even I know Telugu. Okay, don't worry. Varshita, we are talking to each other. Even I know Telugu. I can understand Telugu. <laughs> so, can we start now, students? Can we start with the first topic for your gymnosperms? That is going to be your female cone. Okay. Let me draw a female cone here. Let me draw a female cone here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Imagine this is the female cone. Yes. Tell me in the chat, is the female cone haploid or diploid? Yes. Tell me. Female cone is going to be diploid in nature. Why? Because this is your sporophyll. And sporophyll is what? Sporophyll is basically... Sporophyll is basically part of the main plant body. Yes, it is a part of the main plant body and it is diploid in nature. It is diploid in nature. Now, this particular female corn is it called as megasporophyll or microsporophyll? Since it's female, it's called as megasporophyll. It is called as what? It is called as megasporophyll. Clear all of you? Now, students. Can we zoom in on this particular structure? If we zoom in on this particular structure here, we get a structure like this. Yes, this is your megasporangium. Mega sporangia. Yes. Now, this megasporangia is diploid in nature and the other name for megasporangia is ovule. It's also called as what? Ovule. Now, inside this megasporangia, we have numerous, numerous diploid cells. We have what? Numerous diploid cells. We have numerous diploid cells. Now, what are these numerous diploid cells? This numerous diploid cells are called, called as what? M, M, C. Now, what is this MMC? MMC is called as your megaspore mother cell. MMC is called as what? Megaspore mother cell. Now, this MMC will undergo meiosis. Meiosis to produce megaspore. See, from megasporangia, we will get megaspore. Now, these megaspores are going to be haploid in nature. Megaspore is going to be haploid in nature. Yes. Now, in total of students, in total of, there are four megaspores here. How many megaspores? Hit the like button, I'll tell you how many times. <laughs> hit the like button, I'll tell you. If you think it is four megaspore. If you think it is four megaspore, hit the like button. There are four megaspores here. There are four megaspores. 
आउट ऑफ दिस फोर मेगा स्पोर्स थ्री विल डीजेनरेट थ्री विल डीजेनरेट एंड ओनली वन विल बी फंक्शनल ओनली वन विल बी फंक्शनल दट इज थ्री ऑफ दम विल डीजेनरेट ओनली वन विल बी फंक्शनल only one will be functional so if i can draw here let's see this is your integuments actually these are your integuments integuments okay one is functional one is functional three are Degenerated, three are degenerated. So what is the structure? This is your mega sporangia. This is your mega sporangia, which is diploid in nature, which is diploid in nature. Now, students, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me very carefully. This functional one, this functional mega mega spore. this functional mega spore will undergo mitosis will undergo mitosis to produce the female gametophyte will undergo mitosis now it will undergo a mitosis to produce your female gameto what will produce female gametophyte all of you follow until me as everyone following tell me in the chat quickly tell me in the chat if everyone is following because if you don't understand any of this part rest of the life cycle is not for you okay rest of the life cycle is not for you now quickly tell me in the chat is a gametophyte haploid or diploid See, remember here meiosis happen remember meiosis took place here, took place here right so this male female gametophyte is going to be haploid in nature female gametophyte is going to be haploid in nature remember students every single step is important here if you do not understand any single step please watch it again write it again and learn write it again and learn let me draw this again female gametophyte here with better diagram this is a female gametophyte this is your we have the female gametophyte here female gametophyte will have a cup shaped structure not one now this female gametophyte will have two to four cup shaped structure called as archegonium what do we have we have archegonium here archegonium archegonium this is your female gametophyte female gameto fight now what happens here in this archegonium what happens male gamete is the male gamete biflagellated anthrozoid here no the male gamete here is going to be pollen grain the male uh, male gametophyte is going to be your pollen grain here so pollen grain will come here pollen grain is landing pollen grain is coming important remember in the case of your gymnosperms we have pollen grains remember that so pollen grains is here yes pollen grain is coming now once pollen grain happens what happens here fertilization is happening fertilization is happening fertilization is taking place what happens in this particular what do we have here now we have a zygote we have a deployed zygote here we have a deployed zygote here clear now let me draw one final diagram here which will end the entire cycle one final diagram to end the entire cycle okay listen to this very carefully final diagram okay one final diagram the you will understand the entire history how the plants are developed okay now what is this structure here this is your zygote this is the 
फीमेल फीमेल केमिटोफाइट यस दिस इज द फीमेल केमिटोफाइट एंड दिस इज द जाइकोट जी हा मेगा स्पोरेंजिया यस इट्स कॉल्ड मेगा स्पोरेंजिया और ओव्यूल यस ना कैन यू सी दिस स्ट्रक्चर कैन यू टू दिस टू लाइंस के फ्रॉम दैट टाइम आई एम ड्राइंग राइट तो टू लाइंस व्हाट आर दे दे आर इंटेग्यूमेंट्स दे आर इंटेग्यूमेंट्स नाउ स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू लुक एट अ टिपिकल सीड दिस इज अ टिपिकल सीड अ टिपिकल सीड विल हैव अ सीड कोट यस अ टिपिकल सीड विल हैव अ सीड कोट यस will have a seed coat now remember students very carefully the integuments the integuments will develop into the seed coat integuments will develop into the seed coat very important line very important line now what happened to the zygote inside this can we have a multi cellular called structure called as embryo yes we can have called as embryo they can also have structure called as your endosperm endosperm yes endosperm this entire structure is your seed entire structure is your seed now this zygote develops into the embryo and that same embryo later develops into the entire plant so embryo develops into the entire plant remember sexual reproduction of flowering plants embryo globular embryo heart shape embryo changes on right so this zygote develops into embryo which later develops to a plant what about the female gametophyte remember the female gametophyte was haploid in nature the same female gametophyte will develop into the endosperm and that is why we say the endosperm in the case of your gymnosperm is haploid in nature it is haploid in nature the entire ovule remember class 10th the ovule develops into a seed and the ovary develops into fruit ovule developing into seed ovule developing into the seed the reason in your pteridophytes that there was no integuments there were no integuments in your seed that's why there was no seed formation but here we have seed coat because of integuments that is why there is formation and also do you see anywhere ovary anywhere here do you see ovary anywhere here no that is why this particular seed here is lonely it does not have a what around it and that is why this seed is naked because there is no ovary here because there is no ovary here okay no ovary here now what about the male cone imagine this is a male cone male cone is producing male cone is producing your microsporangia micro sporangia now this microsporangia undergoes meiosis will undergo meiosis to produce your microspore there we had megaspore we have microspore here and this microspore develops into your pollen grain develop into your pollen grain develops into the pollen grain and the same pollen grain is called as what male gametophyte it's called as what male gametophyte also your pollen grain also your pollen grain that is the entire story of your gymnosperms let's take one or two questions and before we end the class okay let's take one or two questions the first question is going to be your choose the right answer <laughs> choose the right answer choice corresponding to the characteristic of gymnosperm from the op options given below ovary encloses the ovule obviously not megasporangium releases the megasporangium remember does it produce the pollen grain we just learnt no the the sporophyte relies on the gametophyte sporophyte relies on the gametophyte tell me in the chat both male and the female gametophyte do not possess free living existence do not feel do not have free living existence 
if you look at the structure here the gametophyte again see gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte that is both male and the female uh, gametophyte do not have free living existence that is here in both the cases can you see the gametophyte the gametophyte is dependent on the sporophyte this is the sporophyte this is the sporophyte option number d such easy questions right such easy questions male and female gametophyte in gymnosperms are dominant and independent free living and autotrophic reduced and dependent well developed and photosynthetic we just saw it is reduced and it is completely dependent gametophyte is nothing at this point gametophyte is nothing everything is sporophyte game everything is sporophyte game what is the economic importance that's going to be your angiosp oh angiosperms i added here okay trimodus it's gymnosperm main again it's going to be your main importance is going to be your fossil fuels it is going to be used for timber and other conditions okay now can we summarize the entire chapter can we summarize the entire chapter in one slide yes sir we can we can summarize the entire chapter in one slide here one slide the entire chapter see here students entire chapter in one slide first we started off with your algae first we started with algae here we learned that unicellular or it can be multicellular it can be unicellular or multicellular in nature yes unicellular your clamidomorous chlorella multicellular your other organisms we had main plant body was gametophyte vascular structure was absent habitat or aquatic or moist surfaces water for reproduction yes seeds no flowers no bryophytes multicellular there were no unicellular here main gametophytic plant body was the main vascular plants absent habitat damp and humid surfaces water for reproduction yes seeds no flowers also no pteridophytes multicellular main plant body remember from pteridophytes onwards from pteridophytes onwards the main plant body was your multicellular and sporophyte main plant body was sporophyte then we have present that is your vascular system from this point onwards here or oh, here also sorry sporophyte and present from pteridophyte onwards from pterido uh, pteridophytes onwards main plant body was sporophyte and it became vascular xylem and phloem were first found in your pteridophytes habitat is terrestrial no more aquatic or no more damp water for reproduction yes seeds no flower no what about gymnosperms multicellular main plant body is again sporophyte from your vascular plants present terrestrial what of reproduction no because we have pollen grains now we have pollen grains pollen grains do not require pollen grains do not require any water medium here then we have what seeds yes but do we flower no flower here angiosperm is technically removed from you but i have mentioned it here that is multicellular sporophyte present terrestrial everything is same the only difference is going to be angiosperm onwards there is flowering from angiosperm onwards which we study in your sexual reproduction of flowering plants that is your entire chapter of plant kingdom that is the entire chapter of plant kingdom in one slide students if you like the session if you love the session today entire chapter has been done in almost three and a half hours if you take out the 10 minutes for the break time not break that voice thing three and a half hours we started this class at what time 4 30 4 30 5 30 6 30 7 30 and eight o'clock almost three and a half hours with every cycle we learned it every cycle we learned the entire chapter of your plant kingdom and students if you love the session today please comment down today's video done and dusted and if you have any doubt comment on today's video and also homework question in homework question in comments i want to see students otherwise i will stop giving homework questions if i don't see the homework question in the comments i will stop giving homework questions from now on this is your homework question i want to see in the comments that is in eurotrix reduction division takes place in the time of when does the reduction division takes place but that is the chapter wise but do you want to meet shreya sir shreya sir is coming to telangana yes so today shreya, sorry shreya sir is coming to your nazipet is coming to nazam pet sorry nazam pet is coming to nazam pet on 24th i believe shreya sir is coming on 24th yes shreya sir is coming on 24th unfortunately i cannot come and gobika ma'am cannot come but shreya sir is going to come in nazam 
come to naza pet that's going to be for your bridge course and he'll be detail detailing you on so many important factors so if you want to meet shreyas sir and get guidance from him go on register now there's a link in the description from 10 am to 4 pm shreyas sir is going to be there in azam pet go on wait okay go on wait for him there okay and students this is what actually okay, i took the chapter for three and a half hours that is my way of teaching but there are teachers who can teach the same chapter in two hours yes there are teachers who can teach the chapter in two hours that is because such teachers are experts in teaching crash course okay i am not there yet i can teach but i can after it takes my time and i have to may build up the hype and everything that is my way of teaching but there are teachers who can teach in lot short duration of time and very good teachers that the such teachers you will only find such teachers will only find in crash course that is in our crash course that is your crash course starting from 21st march started already yes 21st march and it is present in every single state is this offline or online this is offline coaching this is offline and when i was in my class 12th you know how much i paid for my crash course i paid around 30000 for my crash course what is the crash course price here the crash course price here is what 7000 8000 8000 8000 offline crash course these are offline crash course offline crash course not even online offline crash course and trust me vedantu will we always think of students in a way that you know we should be helping them in a low cost and high quality high quality that is i've been that is what we have been doing and it will include 4 point hours daily teaching total of 120 75 hours of learning 175 hours of learning as there right but if you cannot if you if you don't live in the cities which we told that is if you don't live in your chennai so many spots are there coimbatore madurai trichy pune patiala delhi or last one what can you do do we have your do we have your offline yes crazy 30000 yes that was the price right but if there is no offline coaching what can you do like imagine if we do not coming in your city can we join the online coaching yes students see trust me youtube is fine i'm telling you youtube is fine but trust me i take time gopika ma'am have you noticed we take so much of time because of crash course has different set of teachers only where they are so proficient in teaching you the entire chapter in 2 hours i cannot do that still i cannot teach you the entire see i take so much of time because i know my students need this time and i this is my way of teaching but in the crash course we have some teachers which will actually teach you in 2 hours those is that is crash course okay and if you do not have in live in a city we have again for 2000 rupees again for 2000 rupees we have online coaching online coaching which will include see full syllabus revision 120 sessions we have all india mock test 20 practice my questions and we have your unlimited doubt app see here right now i'm not asking you so many doubts because time is limited on vedantu crash course you will have unlimited doubt you can keep on asking doubt they'll keep on solving your doubt unlimited doubt unlimited doubt and we have we also get tatva copies you know have you seen our books tatva books are so beautiful they have little extra information i've seen the books beautiful books you'll get free pdf of those books but trust me ncert is enough but if you want to cross verify tatva books will get for free that is your initially we cro- initially this was for 8000 now it is 2000 rupees because shreyas sir told because shreyas sir was like no shreyas sir was like 8000 is too much we will make it for 2000 rupees shreyas sir discussed make it for 2000 shreyas sir told that okay <laughs> that is there that is the shreyas sir because shreyas sir only it became 2000 rupees these are teachers who will be teaching so have you see there is someone called dinesh sir i personally know the i personally know dinesh sir okay i have 3 years of 4 years of teaching experience you know how many experience dinesh sir has dinesh sir has 25 23 years of experience of teaching 23 years so that's what his domain is my domain is long teaching i take my time if you understand my teaching like the video comment down my teaching is this way some day i will also become expert in crash course that day we'll see there that day we'll see there when i become crash course teacher but right now i am a teacher who takes time and understand okay and hopefully you are understanding my concepts if you are understanding my concepts what i teach to you the grab the my way of you know 
teaching <laughs> that is long lectures i take my time and i want all of you to get engaged right hit the like button also today comment down today's video how was today's session okay will you comment down and also homework question if you do not comment on homework question i'm not giving you homework question anymore i am not giving you homework question anymore if you don't comment okay i'll not give you homework question from next time onwards so with that being said thank you so much students thank you so much thank you so much and all the notes students see these notes are very important every single notes will be available in the pdf copy in our telegram channel it will be available or if you look at the description of this video let me show you if you go to the description of this video one second students what happened where did it go to print board if you look at the here if you look at the comments here sir you'll be like sir i didn't make see here can you see here oh that is stress are coming this is your no it is not given here oh today okay students i will make sure uh, in today's video in the bottom of today's video all the notes will be given to you so you don't have to struggle too much these notes are very important i have noted every single line of ncert is written right questions are there if you want to solve more questions i'll give, i'll give you pyqs also solve those pyqs now one thing which you need to do is tomorrow morning when you wake up tomorrow morning when you wake up solve the P, solve the pyq so read ncert ones tomorrow morning just read the ncert ones and this chapter will be like ha huh, such easy chapter you will tell me that okay you only tell me that so with that being said i'll take care right now i'll go home 8 o'clock right i can reach home easily by 10 uh, take me two hours to reach home i'll reach home by 10 o'clock so with that being said thank you so much students thank you for sticking with me bye bye take care all of you